All right, well, let's get started, I believe, with episode 184. My name is Tim. I'm here with Jeffrey. Hello. Hello. And Derek with a blanket. Hello. Derek D with a, a B. The... <laughs> that I feel like that should mean something else, but I can't. Yeah, I think that's fine. D with a B. Yeah. <laughs> D with a B. Context uh, we've got some new stuff that uh, has come out this week, but mostly little games. And so we'll also talk about... Baldur's Gate 3, which Derek has finished, and I know Jeff's played more of, I've played more of, so we'll talk about that a little more. And then um, last week, uh, I believe both Derek and Jeff were off last week, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Or Jeff, were you here last week? No, I was here last week. I was off. Derek was off. And we talked Starfield, and we got Kyle's take on Starfield. He's been playing it a ton more, but he's out this week, so we'll let uh, Derek share his thoughts. I know Jeff and I have played it a little more as well, so we'll give some updated thoughts on that. Um, and then we're going to circle back to a segment. I looked on our kind of past show notes. It's been over a year since we've done this, but gaming grievances. And I've got a bone to pick with gamers, and I'm going to express some gaming grievances today. I saw this in the show notes and thought you made up the segment because I was like, that. We've only sure, done it. it. It rolls off the tongue really nicely, but I've n I never sounded. It doesn't sound so familiar to me. Like it, Derek and I did it in uh, Fathers of the Grind podcast back in the day, and then we've done it okay. once with Current Gen, and then never circled back to it. So. And this is not Try Hard Tracker. This is different. This is not Try Hard Tracker. This is okay. Tim having a bone to pick with something in the industry. In this case, it's gamers, and we'll get to that. And then a bunch of headlines, and we'll get out of here. Let's okay. kick things off, though, with a couple small new releases before we dive into Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield. Those games are are still top of mind and top of time, really, for most of us. So we're going to dive into those. But just some quick hits of new things that are out. NBA 2K24 is out. I know that's a notable release for a lot of people. I know, Derek, you've gotten that game in the past. Not sure if you're still a 2K. Uh, NBA yeah, 2K. I mean, I used to play it. I haven't played one personally in probably like five years. But uh -huh. I used to buy it every year for Eli. It's actually I know they surprising. are on Game Pass sometimes after a few months. Yeah, right? after a while, but... Yeah. It's just kind of surprising. Even I think Eli is getting away from all that stuff. I don't even know if he even cares. I'm sure he'll ask for FIFA, but uh, he's been more like, when's Spider Man 2 coming out? Yeah. And all right. I just what talked to him tonight what about playing. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked to him tonight about playing Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, you should play that. Um, so he's getting into more mature games. He's really big into like GTA 5. And all that oh, stuff okay. but awesome anyways my point is is that he's kind of sidetracking and getting out of i think sports games i think they're kind of starting to bore him i think he's getting to that age where he's like he's realizing it's literally the same thing every year so i'm yep. doing the yep. same thing every year right yeah i agree um that's a pretty notable one another notable one believe it or not even though it's a mobile game it's final fantasy 7 ever crisis square's been pushing this one and some of their presentations we've seen it and the appeal to me at least is oh you get the entire final fantasy 7 story saga whatever kind of told in one place in one environment um although it's not all released right away i think they're releasing this over a period of several months i think i'm not sure exactly what the cadence is going to be but you're not going to be able to play through all of it right away um but i did download it played it a little bit today on my phone my son thought it was pretty cool because the opening scene, at least, and the battles do look a lot like Final Fantasy VII Remake. It looks really, really good. And then as you're moving your character around, it's a little more like a super high-res old Final Fantasy VII look, at least at the beginning, where you know they're a little bit shorter, stubbier versions of the characters, but it looks very crisp. It looks very nice. And you can either tap on a location to walk to it, or you can just pick a spot and just hold down with your thumb, and it becomes a joystick. So any spot on the screen can kind of become your control. So like it, it works well. Like I think it's slick. The production values are high. The special effects looked cool. The opening combat sequence is really neat. Um, but then once you get through that first section, you beat the boss in the Mako reactor. You guys are all familiar with that from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Then you get the classic kind of introduction to the mobile systems because you've after the battles you get some pretty standard stuff. You get some materia, some some items, and you get the stuff called blue crystals that they don't really explain what it is now they explain what it is it's one of the several currencies that you have just like with all mobile games some of which you have to pay for it because it's a free to download game uh and other stuff you earn you earn it by logging in you earn it by meeting you know doing challenges and you know all the normal mobile game things come into play 
And even though I think the production value is high, the music sounds really nice. It's all that Final Fantasy VII classic music. It's very high quality, but it just, it just, there's something about it. There's some note that these types of games hit. It happened with Disney Speedstorm too. Even if the core game is good, if you've got those little menus that pop up and five more to ensure a five-star weapon unlock or whatever, I start to just kind of lean back like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to play this. I don't right. know. There's something about it. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but exact same way. Okay. As soon as I detect it, as soon as I detect the gotcha style mobile type of game, they anywhere, have a thing called gotcha. You get these gotcha tickets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And in, like, in Japan, that's like an okay thing. Like they're like used to it, I guess. I, I assume. But here, it's like it literally sounds like ah, got your money. Like it sounds like <clears throat> right. I always thought that was almost. I thought it was almost like, like a term like Metroidvania that we in the industry made up. It yeah. wasn't until recently I realized like, oh no, that's like an actual term over there. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I'm kind sure of it's a, a lottery Japanese draw word. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But to me, like it translates in America, you would just yes. say gotcha and I got your money. Like yeah, like a trap. It's, it's a trap. It's, it's, it's a trap. It's a trap. It really is. <laughs> So that's why it's as soon as I detect it, I'm like, I'm out, I'm out. So I, I think it's worth if you're a Final Fantasy VII fan, especially, it's worth the download just to see if you're interested in seeing the whole story. They do some, you know, there's they include a bunch of characters and storylines that I, I know are going to be interesting. But as soon as I saw the mobile stuff, I was like, you know what? When I want to do the whole story, I'll either do a YouTube recap, like I'll pick some super long form version that someone I know people have done this on YouTube to tell the whole Final Fantasy VII arc. Or I'll just do what Derek did and go back and play Crisis Core through and, and pick up on that story. And so and Crisis I, I, Core is way better. I'm not giving it a hard pass. Like it's I think it is worth it for mega fans of the series. I just man, I personally get real shut down when those kind of things kick in. So anyway, totally. I think the only one that I kind of got into was <clears throat> uh, the Fire Emblem one. Mm, uh, I don't even remember that one. That one was pretty fun. That was like probably that was back. That was way before current gen, I believe. I think yeah. it was wow. just you and I. Okay, so I would have been yeah. out. It was probably 20 in that era of my gaming. or something. Yeah. 20 yeah. somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah. So I I liked that one. Um, I think well, that it didn't hit you over the head it, with the uh, yeah. With the it was all stuff. free too. It was just like play, like play daily, earn this, and, and then you come back to a spin tomorrow. for a random character to unlock. Yeah. And sometimes they were like a really strong version of a character. But yeah. Yeah. So I enjoyed that, and Fire Emblem's an easy game to <laughs> make it a mobile game. Um, yeah. But I was actually, when I first saw the IGN, like, previewing this game, I was like, oh, what is this? Like, because yeah. it looks so good, and then I found yeah. out it was mobile, and I was like, oh, don't care. I, I stopped watching the <laughs> videos. Yep. I just don't care. It's I don't think it's, it is. Yeah. I don't think it's just like the menus and all the, and currency and stuff like that because I had a lot of fun playing. You played uh, Disney Speedstorm. Yeah, you I played it. a lot of Disney Speedstorm. Now I will say I do think that did impact me walking away from it because I did get tired of like how to unlock all the characters. That was actually fun in the beginning, but then I got overwhelmed by all the stuff they kept adding. And I was like, Mm. I can't keep up. So I'm just, I'm, I'm done. Um, But that's, that's kind of my thing is like, I think for me personally, it's just, it's a bias against like mobile gaming. Like as soon as I hear it's on there, I'm like, "Ah, I have no interest in this. Um, So I, it's just a, it's a me thing. I, I don't, I don't care. Um, even if it's a great game, I probably I might like if people are like, it's so good. I might download and try it. But I know. If it's not on console or PC, I'm not going to stick to it. I'm not yeah. going to care. Yeah, no, I, I do think it's cool if we didn't have, you know, such a busy gaming year. Maybe, there might have been past years where I would have been, especially if it's a summertime release that I might have been like, all right, I'll play this for a little while. But yeah. nah, this was a one afternoon download. Try delete it's also a pretty big file because they're rendering so much stuff on the phone so it's yeah it does look good it's a multi-gig download on your phone there um another smaller game that i tried to demo of i think jeff you might have purchased the full game called chance of sanar sanar i don't know how to say this sanar 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 um so this game is a so it's kind of a that's the deep south way to say it sanar chance of sanar uh, <laughs> I wish they would pronounce it Chance of Santa because it looks like it's set like, you know, in some 
the mountains of the Himalayas or something. It kind of has that vibe to it a bit. It's like this isometric, very cool art style, hand drawn looking thing. If you ever played like um, that, what is it called? The Beautiful Swan and those kind of games, even the recent Viewfinder where things, there's like a hard borders on certain things. Um, and then a lot of open space color. Oh, well, there was also one from last year that had cool art style that none of us really ended up liking that much. Um, I'm blanking out on it where you ride the little jet bikes around. Anyway, um, there are some oh, cool man, I art don't styles. Remember. I don't remember, but we played it. Both you and I played it. We did for play sure. it. You're like, yeah, it's a little bit bland, um, but the art style was really cool. But it, this has similarities where there's a real strong outline for objects, for walls, for characters, and then just like, nice solid colors. It's definitely mm-hmm. not the art style for everybody, but I liked it. I like the gameplay of this, this puzzle gameplay where you you don't understand anything that's happening because you'll see these random symbols come up, almost like um, hieroglyphics or something. Yeah. And you have to use contextual clues and also how other characters are speaking to you and using the same symbols to you actually type in your guesses for what it might mean. And then you'll get opportunities throughout the game to like try to confirm, oh, this means you, this means me, this means a door, this means open. And if you get it correct, if you match up correctly, then it unlocks like this is the true meaning of that symbol. And from now on, whenever you see it, you'll know what it means. So it's a cool little like translation puzzle game. It's unique. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. What do you think about it? It's a la- Yeah, it's a language puzzle game. I didn't get much further than the demo. Like I think I played like 30 more minutes outside of the demo. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- the progress carried over from the demo. So okay. the game, the reason I got it is because like, I mean, the idea intrigues me of it being a language based yeah. puzzle game. Yeah. And uh, don't get me wrong. There are actual puzzles at play too. There are environmental things you have to do to trigger like pull a lever and trigger some water or something like that or drain some water or and whatever. Then go back and pull the other lever and then go back and then pull yeah. the other lever. There's, there's some actually, there, believe it or not, there's actually some stealth uh, stuff in it too, where like you're in a, in a forbidden area mm-hmm. and um, you have to throw something to get a guard to go walk away. Plague Tale. T- they only Plague had Tale one of those style. in the demo. Is there more of that as the game goes on? I only encountered it once, but then oh. I got to a church area where like I had to fall in. There's these monks walking around and I had to fall in formation to get into Forbidden Area. All right. It's kind of cool. Um, which is kind of rad. Like, I mean, that was the only way to get in there is to pretend to be a monk. And then as soon as you break formation, it goes, oh, you're in a forbidden area and you kind of have to work fast. Like Assassin's like, Creed Brotherhood when you got to like blend in the crowd and like walk with. Yeah, except there's like way less of a crowd and it's it kind of makes the NPCs look really stupid that they, that they don't notice you. <laughs> Like literally just turn around and you'll Where be Where like, did he go? Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I hit a I hit a wall at some point after playing an extra thirty to forty five minutes. Um uh-huh. and that's when I was like, oh, nope, not in the mood for a puzzle game. And yeah. Actually, I would say 80% of the time I'm not in the mood to push further on a puzzle game. If I but have this to is look a creative up anything, one, right? It's not a normal very creative. puzzle game. Yeah. yeah, it's not the usual like humanity I would describe as a usual puzzle game, even though there's some cool physics involved that are unique mm. to that game. That's definitely more of a standard. Okay, I cleared this level. Let's go to the next puzzle. And yeah, the concept <clears throat> this is more wide been open. around, right? Like using arrows to direct something. Like that's been yeah. around for a little while. Yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and this one's more wide open, and it's kind of like an MC Escher painting where you're kind of like that's steps. The description. Yeah. The steps lead to so many different directions, and you're like, yeah. "Am I on the right level?" Like yeah. you don't, you can't, you can't really tell until you walk up the steps, yep. uh, which is kind of cool. So I love that art style. Um, but yeah, I'm just not in the mood to with when there's such big daunting games out right now. I'm just kind of not in the mood to look up walkthroughs on a puzzle game when I get stuck, uh, which is normally yeah. what happens. Um, yeah. But it's yeah, it's still a pretty inventive for for this genre. Yeah, I, I think, think for people who like puzzle games, anything where you have to work to solve what something might mean, um, this is a unique one. It actually reminds me a little bit of like the older Sierra games where you have to type in the solution in order to get something to work. Like when you play Space Quest, you have to actually type in take key card from guard body or whatever. Like you had to type but it quadrilateral in. Quadrilateral Cowboy was like that from like 2016 or whatever. Oh, okay. I remember the title of that one. Where like yeah, you had to it, type in, it was almost like you had a DOS window open and you had to type in yes. commands. To that trigger. was the old Sierra games. Yeah. Where you'd like walk up to a bookshelf and you have to be like, look at bookshelf and it would tell you some titles. Take whatever title you saw that you want. Take this yeah. book. Like you have to actually type in the commands. So this gave me small vibes of that where you're typing in what you think the word might mean to help you kind of move things along. So. Yeah, and sometimes you're on and sometimes you're not. I kind of wish if you were dead on that it would just reward you with the word. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but but when because otherwise I'm like, OK, so it's clearly saying follow. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. the word unlocks and it's like come slash go. And I'm like, yeah. wait, that's not it's just follow. Yeah. Just just put follow, just say follow or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever agreed it's fine. agreed that one's that one's a pretty cool little puzzle game uh, i recommend it if you're into that kind of thing i think it's only like 12 bucks on sale or something and then yeah. another kind of point and click puzzle game uh the many pieces of mr ku is the last kind of notable one just because a couple of us played it i played the demo thought it was great jeff Demo's five played minutes. it yeah and finished it yeah yeah because it's an hour uh if that um actually the walk there's a walkthrough that i found on youtube that was like 40 minutes so you could actually beat it sooner, but that's if you have the powers of observation and knowing exactly where the game wants you to go. But for the most part, you're going to be walking around a lot going, where do you want me to go? <laughs> Just asking aloud. Uh, but I love the art style in this game because it's like uh, it's it's very much like a throwback hand drawn Fantasia type type of art style where you okay. can where you can tell there was actual labor put into this. And at yep. times there's like actual a person's kind of like the aha music video, a person's hand will come up, but it's like a hand drawn outline of the hand. And you can tell it's a human that shot it, shot their own hand and stuff. And then they just drew around it or whatever. So it doesn't like, there's just a lot of conflicting, not conflicting, but uh, contrasting art styles uh, sometimes happening in the game, which I thought was really cool. So the game's really nutty. It's really hard to describe the story. The reason that it's called many pieces um, is because at one point you do get set, your body parts get severed. And you have to locate them at a certain point, uh, um, which is kind of like what remains of Edith Finch a little bit. But there's a part of that game I think you have to do that, isn't there? Oh, it's like, like it's I like Resident remember. Evil Village. We got to find the pieces of your baby and put it back <laughs> together. Isn't that the storyline of that game? <laughs> Derek, didn't I get that one right? Isn't are you finding pieces of your baby? Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny because at one point, like at one point, it's just your head and your legs, and you're like <laughs> you have to alternate between which body part you want to control. Uh, and there are certain puzzles that are just so stupid. And, and like, I can't believe somebody thought of this and then animated it hand drawn. <laughs> and it made you do it. Like at one point you have to use those, what are those blower things that you, oh, those yeah. for, for like fireplaces and stuff uh-huh. um, to like get the flames bigger and stuff. At one like, point you have like to. Like Max uses in Princess Bride to bring Wesley back to life. Remember that? <laughs> he puts it yes. in his mouth. <laughs> Same exact thing. Same the, thing. The, at one point, you have to put your head, your severed head, at the end end of that <laughs> apparatus, and then you have to use your legs to jump on it, and then it inflates That's your so head, and then you have to use your legs to kick your inflated head to a certain area. It's so ridiculous. Like I, yeah, it's 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 another twelve dollar game on sale. So like I was like, okay, I might as well get it. Um, I'm glad I stuck with this one. The puzzles are just a little very outside the box like uh, chance of sonar has its own um innovation in the genre and this one is like even more so but it's just the mm-hmm. fact that it's so short that it's that makes it a really hard sell especially yeah. the point and click uh type of um gameplay that your gameplay quote unquote that you're doing right Right. No, it's it, it's a, it's a tough sell, generally. Yeah, speaking. but they're b- both very unique games, worth taking yeah. a look at at least. They both have demos as well. I would say for Steam, for so for many pieces of yada yada, I would definitely say just YouTube it, man, because I mean it's well worth just watching because the visuals it are just looks like good. a short, like a cartoon yeah. short. Yeah, um, and the art style is wacky. It almost looks like that. Um, What's that place in Denver? I think you went when you to visit that art place where things meow are just Wolf. weird. Yeah, Meow yeah. Wolf, where things are just kind of mm-hmm. weird and like. Yeah, this is out of place, but I'm staring at it. I don't know why I keep looking yeah. at this thing. Like, it's like it's that kind of things stuff. we're familiar with, but not at the same time. It's yeah, <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's talk a little bit about Starfield. Now, well, most of you heard if you listened to the show before, you heard Kyle, myself, Jeff talk about our thoughts on it last week. Um, and Dan, I think, is has now played it a little bit now that it's out on Game Pass, I think. And Derek has finally um spent some time with it. So we'll talk about Baldur's Gate 3 in a minute, but let's start with Starfield. And Derek, I'm curious first of your impressions. Now that you you did like a, an, what, a couple hours maybe before you jumped back into Baldur's Gate 3, that was your main game. And if I understood correctly, you've now jumped right back into Starfield and you spent some more time with it. So what do you what do you think about it so far? You like other Bethesda games too. So what do you think so far? Yeah, I'm a few, I'm like nine hours in now. Um, I like it. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Um, there's still some stuff like, like, here's my take on this. Like, I see a lot of posts crapping on this game. I, I don't don't quite understand that. I feel like it has a target for some reason. I'm not going to get into the whole Xbox bias. Like, people hate Xbox, so they're attacking it. It's all phonies. 
that definitely could be it, but I, I don't have actual proof, so I don't really care. I just see a lot of it in like bigger groups. I don't really see it. I don't think I've really saw, saw it in our group. Um, just really attacking this game, and, and, and it's so weird because I even went and checked the Metacritic again just to make sure this game didn't drop because I'm like, this has got to be one of the most crapped on like 86, 87 game I have ever seen. Because if you just read people's impressions, you would think this is like the biggest disappointment and it's trash. So my expectations uh, going into it, we did that that recording. I said that I thought this game was going to be a Metacritic of 90. Um, I said I'm at a 9 out of 10, but my expectations kind of dropped when I started seeing a bunch of people just crapping on it. And so playing it now, I'm like, I don't quite understand where all the hate's coming from. There are a few things where I could say objectively, like, for instance, the NPCs and just characters in general are very, very ugly. A lot of them are. Some of them are okay, but a lot of them are very unattractive. Like, even the most attractive girl in the game, I'm like... Maybe if I'm drunk, I'll sleep with you in real life, but... I think you're uh, a little biased, because you're coming off Baldur's Gate 3, which has all attractive people with great character yeah, models. So absolutely. That's part of the problem, probably. I will say this. I am. I will not be like what I've seen other people say, where they're going to... Look, Baldur's Gate did change the way I want games to be, but I, this game was being made at the same time. We can't hold Starfield to the to the standards of Baldur's Gate that right, nobody knew at the time Baldur's Gate was going to be. And they're nobody be knew. This, they're not trying to be the same game, so it's fine. Exactly. It's not yeah. even close. Like, gameplay-wise, it's not even close. Yep. Um, the level of RPG, I would still say Starfield has RPG elements, but I don't feel like yeah. it's a really deep RPG game. Um, and Fallout games weren't really that deep. I'm talking about the more modern ones, not the old school ones. We're not really deep RPGs. Yes, they had number systems when you did the VAT system, but that's literally all the VAT system is, is it freezes the screen and then you just pick the body part that has the highest percentage. Like, and then you go, okay, I want to shoot at that. And that's it. Like that's, that's your RPG element to it. There's, you know, again, some subtle stuff that you can impact your conversation with your type of character and all that stuff that Baldur's Gate does. But Baldur's Gate does it on like a deep, deep, like number system. There's a lot of depth to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't put those expectations on it. And I'm just coming away from it again, only nine hours in, just really enjoying it. What do you think There's about the combat? Because you're a big fan of first person shooters done right. How does it feel for you when you're shooting? Okay, so like I overall like the combat, but I also don't love it. And the reason why is I don't think it's like the feel of the game. The, the game feels fine. It's more like I feel like it's just for me, my combat situations have been a lot of like. There's not a lot of room to fight in a lot of the areas that I'm fighting. And so it there's no cover system. And if there is, I completely missed it. Just and so it's duck. a lot of just, yeah, it's a lot of just standing and shooting at each other and being like, well, I hope I have a better gun than you, you know, like that type of thing. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not really what I wanted. I wanted it to be because that's one of the things I liked about the VAT system and Fallout mm -hmm. was that, yeah, that's actually how Fallout played. Like, it wasn't like you didn't have a cover system. You weren't like it wasn't like you were jumping around everywhere and dodging. It was like shoot and then go into the VAT system to try to like finish them off in a very stylish way. Um, this doesn't have that. So it, it feels like that. Again, I'm only nine hours in, so I don't know if like as you level up your characters and stuff like that, because you can obviously enhance not only how powerful guns are, but how how well you handle and how how fast and quick your character is and things like that. But I just I felt like some of the shooting was a little bland um, because like the encounters, I should say, were a little bland where it was like, hey, I'm just literally just. I'll hide for a second, heal, pop up, shoot them, you know, that type of stuff. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything else, though, I've really enjoyed. I've enjoyed exploring. Um, I do like like that I can. So this is the thing I like that I'm seeing other people complain about. I like that I can 
pretty much not completely, but pretty much bypass all like space encounters and like flying through space. I have no interest. I'd rather just go into a menu, say I want to go there and warp to there. I have been forced to fight a couple of battles and I didn't like them. And my ship's really, really weak. I just have the yeah. the first ship. I haven't upgraded it at all. I've died like three times in space yeah. battles. And I'm like, Dude, well, there was one I was really pissed sucks. at because I was like, it auto saved when my hull was at this much health. Oof. Yeah. And so it's literally you get one shot and you die. And so I was like, thanks, game. Thank you for auto saving when I'm already in combat and I only can take one hit and I already suck at this. And Something I don't that know. Kyle told me last week because I was not loving it. Space combat was fun, but I wasn't loving it. I was feeling like I was getting dominated. But yeah, he, he just I think Jeff and Kyle pointed this out to me, if I remember correctly, about like, hey, have you using the uh, essentially the VAT system in space? And that's if you unlock that special targeting skill which i had not unlocked with my character so i unlocked it and all of a sudden space combat became much more interesting oh, okay still... i haven't unlocked anything it's one yeah, of the it's... it's one of the first couple things you can pick from yeah your it's on the good. far right i forget which yeah. one I think, I think it's targeting systems is that sound right i think it's called targeting systems. something like that um but you do that and then you just hit x once you once you are have them in your kind of field of view long enough it'll say locked that's not just for missiles you can hit x and it goes into that zoomed in vat mode where you can target engines or lasers okay. or whatever that so that cool. that part i do like and um, that's good that's better for boarding them instead of just destroying their ship and picking up loot because if you yeah. board them there's you can take the ship and get more loot and stuff like that from each body that you i kill. still haven't successfully done how do i haven't done either, there's the no way ship? there's like okay. i'm too i'm too shitty at the space stuff in general right now so, so like i'll like... try to target the engines but then i always inevitably blow up the entire ship i'm like well all right <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah i've only boarded one ship and that was like that's part of a quest. mission yeah. yeah was it oh okay gotcha yeah. Yeah, which boarding is kind of cool. Um, I so if like I can that. if I can get that piece down, that might be like a go learn on YouTube moment for me. Uh, like figure out space battles a little bit more because I think that's. Um, and I know we're getting Derek's impressions, but I do have some updated thoughts too. That's the one thing that I am still struggling to really love, and I want to love it is the space battles. Like I love sci-fi settings. I love the space battling in most yeah. games when it's done well, and this I feel like is done pretty well, but. I think a lot of it's going to be solved with the right skills and the right ship. I do understand that. Like my ship turns super slowly. I feel like I'm just, if yeah, I, yeah. if there's more than two ships I'm fighting, I'm pretty much dead, even if they're not super high level, because they're going to go from all these different angles. And I, I can't do much. So I did upgrade some of the parts of my ship and I'm still not super great. Like my ship still is not super strong. So, you know, either I need to set this, the difficulty maybe a little bit easier, or I just need to, do other things, save up money, and really get a better ship. Or try, Jeff, what you're saying, where maybe I could board one and just yeah, but my fleet. You're, you're doing what you're. I think you're supposed to do, and that's target the engines. And if you if you do that, and then you still end up blowing up the ship, I don't know what else to do. Like you know, like, I've only tried that once to be oh, fair. Oh okay. And okay. the whole ship still blew up. I was like, whoops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it is very satisfying when you slow, win that fight. Like, like I I'm yeah. at level nine, and there were like two level fives and a level ten that attacked me. And yeah, I got one battle where it was like they were really high and I, it was like forced on me. Like I it wasn't like I was just like, I'm exploring. It was like I left the planet yeah. and I'm like, great, come on, guys. And I was literally pissed. I was like, you can grab stop, jump away stop from forcing some of them. me into this. I don't want this. I want to escape. I want to get out of this. You and, can. You just go to the map, pick where you want to go. And as long as you've got some grav points in that in that um little, yeah, little just segment distribute yeah you're as long as you and the more points you have points. the faster that thing will activate i only had one point in there and so i had to like survive for eight seconds while yeah. they were just destroying yeah, basically just me. and it gives you a all countdown your it'll say it like it it'll say like yeah, grab gotcha. system grab system spooling up it's actually pretty exciting yeah. and i was like come on come on come on come on and it's they so hit cool. zero and i jumped out of there i was like all right, that, like, well the, that's good to know i didn't know i could do that because i think i thought i tried it and it said can't do that in yeah, because I was trying to do that, and it said you can't do that in combat. And I was you like, have to, but yeah, you just have to uh, set a course for another part of space. You can't like land on a planet or something. Okay, maybe that was what I was trying to do. Yeah, maybe so I was like, trying to go to a. Those mission. are the kind of things that I wish they would. One of two things: give you a really good, clear tutorial pop up on your screen. This is how you grab jump out of here, or just make it something that is somehow in your HUD, 
where if you hold down a say, certain, but like it's not there. That you would to go help to the you. I'm not going to read the tutorial anyway, so I would still be <laughs> complaining about this. Like, oh, why, yeah, why well, it would have been cool if there, if there was like an early mission that was like, some encounters you 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 yes. can't survive and are difficult. Yes. Here's how you escape them if you were in space okay. or whatever. I had to reload a save because I got in real big trouble with both of the main two factions that are at the beginning. Oh, no. I was shooting some... Sp- I, I jumped to a spot before a mission, and it was a random battle that I saw. I could have ignored it, but I was like, ooh, I'm going to help out the Freestar Collective battle these spacers who are kind of like pirate-type uh, group. So I, I helped them kill them. There's like five of them versus three of the Freestars, and the, the four of us won. And as I blew up the last one, I was still holding my gun button in for too long, my lasers, and it shot one last time and it hit one of the Freestar Collective ships because as it was going in front of me. And then all f- three of them got super mad at me and started attacking me. And like Derek said, it auto-saved right there. So I was like, crap. <laughs> so like I tried to reload that. That didn't work. But then I was like, you know what? They're all There's three of them. They're all level four. And so I did beat them and I clicked all their stuff. And then I had a bounty on my head. And I tried to show up at that planet that has neon to go visit that city and all the freestar collective ships were like there's a bounty on your head son and they all just like started attacking me so i got out of there so then i was like that's fine i'll go back to the main city so i oh are you so, there yeah yeah we're here skype just did something weird to all the entire yeah. Yeah. okay 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 so i jumped back to the main kind of uc alliance planet and they were cool with me, but there was one Freestar Collective ship for some reason in space above that planet, and it started attacking me. And I was like, cool, I'll just kill this guy and then go land. Because I couldn't land, like Derek said, you can't land while you're in combat. So I killed him, and then all of a sudden, all these red dots appeared on my radar because UC Collective was like, you're not allowed to fight any other ships in our in our space. And so there was like level 32 ships all yeah. coming at me. So I was like, <laughs> okay, this is, I'm in too big a trouble here. So yeah, Got I, had to re- save. Yeah. I just reloaded like a much earlier save and, and didn't do that. Oh, and also it really ticked off. I have, I had a party member who had just joined uh, and he and I were like becoming buddies and he was like, I'm glad you're on the team. And I was like, I'm glad I'm on the team. And then as soon as I fought the Freestar Collective guy, it said, he has left your party. He really didn't like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oops. <laughs> so anyway, so, That's but funny. all that stuff to me, like, I know that those, those, um, the, the RPG systems, the like the leveling up systems, the skill systems might not be the deepest in the world. I actually find all the different skill set systems to be, I think they're pretty robust. I like them. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like it's a pretty decent, not super deep, but pretty decent RPG. But also the role playing of the world you're in, that's very strong, in my opinion, just in terms of the, who you can interact with, what side you can join, who you can befriend, and who becomes your enemy. So I feel like I'm getting similar vibes as I would from other deep RPGs that I like. Where I think I, once I, like I'm part I get of to story. like the factions and stuff, that's where I'll probably see all that and be like, yeah, okay, yeah. this is crazy. You can side with this faction. And all yeah, that. there's like a real, there's a real like tense um, armistice going on where they're not supposed to be in full combat with each other, but they all hate each other. So you can tell some stuff's about to hit the fan. I'm I'm pretty sure, but um, I I do like the on foot combat as well. One thing I don't like is the inventory system, and I've heard that's a n- notorious just Bethesda thing yeah. for all their games. So you get overburdened super quick, even if you level up your weight training skill. Which, by the way, you have to be overburdened and try to sprint while having too much in your inventory in order to unlock the next level of weight training. So it kind of makes sense your training, but. Um, Anyway, I do find that I run out of weight really quickly and I have to turn to my companion, whoever it is, and be like, here, take all my stuff, take all this stuff. Um, <laughs> and that's that inventory management system I don't find to be super intuitive. So like, I go to sell stuff and I actually have to have, the, as far as I can tell, I have to have them in my party to mm-hmm. sell the stuff that they're carrying. Because so they I have, own it now. Yeah. So I have to like run back, replace whoever had all the stuff on the last mission and go back to the vendor, whoever I'm selling it. So right. little little things like that, I'm kind of like, just give me like a menu where I can cycle through everyone's inventory and sell it off. Like, I don't know. There's little things like that Which that I think could make it a little Boulders more... Boulder's Gate does that, but Boulder's Gate's pretty bad too. I just don't because like their, We're going to get to that. I don't Lord, like Good Lord, it has just, so... There's like so much stuff. I'm like, I don't know what all this is. I don't even know if it's important or not. There's too much. Both of these games have... I've got qualms yeah. with the inventory they have experience. Serious, at least with Starfield, I can tell, okay, I don't need that bowl. I don't need that spoon. Yeah. Yes. 
Whereas and you can with tell Baldur's if it's a valuable Gate, like, item. do I need yeah. this armor piece? Like, yes. how do I gauge yeah. if it's worse than what any of my team has on right now? Because I'm early yeah. in the game. It's just, I don't want to have to pick it up to find out. Like, just let me assess it from their loot. I don't, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's, a, it's a small qualm. It is. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, I don't, I wish I had more uh, revised thoughts on Starfield, like any update whatsoever. I feel like I played it the most before our last podcast. Um, and then ever since then, I've only been seeing it like, and, and like TikToks and stuff like, and, mm. and because there's another game that has been grabbing my attention more, um, other than Baldur's Gate three, which I kind of just started diving into yesterday. Um, but it's only because that other game, which we'll get to is, uh, it's easier to play in short bursts. It's easier yeah. to play like, Oh, I can play an hour and then stop. And cause you yeah. hit like four save points, you know, there's good stopping points in the game. Yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll talk about that game eventually. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually really do like the dialogue in Starfield. It's very, I think this, it's strong. I think the performances are overall pretty good. Um, I like the dialogue choices and the way they react to you. I do agree with what Derek's saying. Like, their faces are almost, but not quite, and so it makes it a little odd sometimes when yeah. they're staring right at you and they just don't. They're almost there. Like, it's so improved from past Bethesda games that I've seen at least. It really has improved, but it's just, it's a combination of things. Their expressions that kind of suddenly and weirdly change and sometimes it works and sometimes it really doesn't and their eyes all of a sudden look buggy so like it just it depends overall i think it looks fine but there are certainly times that i'm like that my, my favorite like viral clips that i've been seeing are uh when you're just having a normal conversation with the blonde chick from constellation mm-hmm. and there's somebody <laughs> there's somebody behind her that keeps turning around and looking at you with the <laughs> big bethesda the big eyes, eyes. yeah yeah <laughs> Not even part of the conversation or the story. It's just a random NPC. Do you guys so remember the funny. New York Jets coach who was in that? He was infamously big-eyed in that one like news conference, and he's like looking around at the reporters like this. Do you remember that? Vaguely, I don't know. I'm pretty sure people have made that into a meme. Like, oh, it's a big time meme, and yeah, yeah. yeah. His name was Adam something, I think. But yeah, it, it looks like that. Like he looks like a Bethesda character um, with his weirdly big eyes. Um, I think he, was, <laughs> he looked like he was on something. Looked at Adam K- uh, Gase. Gase. Adam Gase. Gase? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He used to be with like the Broncos, I think. Yeah. And then he was on the Jets head coach for a little bit, but he's kind of like, oh, oh, oh. I, just, I typed in Jets coach big eyes, and the first like three pictures are just, <laughs> yeah. You're, you can't yeah. help but laugh. Like, I know. It's, just... it's very uncomfortable. It's like, did something, he reminds, it reminds me of like Winona Ryder at that one awards thing where she's looking yeah. around. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Pizza flying all over the place. <laughs> um, so, okay, so anyways, I would say yeah, my okay. overall is, it, is I really like it. You're having fun. It, it matches to me the the review scores, like the yeah. overall. I'm not talking like the IGNs. I think it's yeah. like a an 85 to an 88 right now. My love for it could change though because not only am I nine hours in, is to me I still consider that early. I haven't gotten I haven't gotten to the the core. Now, I am focusing more on main missions because I've heard from other people go through the main missions. And then once certain areas start to open up, then you can start to go into your little wonder mode and all that different skills and and things you or your ship or something can do. Don't unlock till certain story points. And so yeah, there's a there's a main mission quest called uh, Into the Unknown. And you have to do that. Yeah, if you finish that, I hate that that's one. when that's the game the like I'm opens stuck up. Because oh, okay. you have to like go through like there's distortion and like literally the arrows will point me to go that way. I'll go and then it'll say go back and then I'll go back and I'm like it's literally telling me it's here. I haven't so there's nothing I haven't here. done that yet. I'm doing lots of side stuff. I've done a bunch yeah. of like side I'm missions. I'm doing that mission point. now and I'm like I don't know what you want me to do. I'm literally right here where you're telling me I'm supposed to be and nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah. Overall, I, I still want I to do the it. side quest. That's uh, and this is how early I am in the game. But there's a there's a tablet you collect early on in the game, and I think yeah. you can collect it in a main quest. I uh, just like the got second it. main quest, and it's like as soon as you read it, it activates the mantis uh, side yeah. quest. Yeah, I have totally that, optional. Man. And if you do it, you get. I can't like, jump far enough for the mantis quest yet. Oh <laughs> dang, bummer. Okay, so yeah, it is like a Batman type of side quest. Like, did you guys uh, do in that the, world? Uh, it's like a superhero, basically. Okay, did you guys right. do the mannequin trick where there's like a a helmet, a I suit? Saw, yeah, in the through in the, like um, the crack in the door in the yeah. lodge. Yeah, go in the crack in the door. I didn't yeah. do it yet, but I've seen it. I haven't I either. Yeah, do it. 
I did it, and it's like high end stuff. Like yeah. they're like they're like my suits worth like thirty six thousand dollars or something like that. Oh my gosh! And my helmet's like nine thousand, ten thousand, maybe That's eleven thousand. So nice. So yeah, cool. I need, I need and it's actually that. decent looking too. So. I do like the I do like the stamina slash oxygen system. I think it all works pretty seamlessly. Like I don't feel overwhelmed by all the gauges and bars I have to track. Like you. If you, we were to actually be in space, there's too many things you have to keep track of to survive and be successful yeah. out there. So I'm glad it's all narrowed down to like, hey, jumping takes oxygen. Sprinting takes up your... It's like There's not a stamina meter or a food meter or all these other things. It's just mostly just health and oxygen. That's what you got to worry yeah. about. And I, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. I think it simplifies it. It allows me to focus on all the other cool stuff in the game. I don't like both in this game and in Baldur's Gate and and even like in games like The Witcher, that they let you pick up anything. That really bothers me. After a while, I'm just like, can you just so have enemies drop the currency that we use? In the, like, I'm, I'm a little annoyed yeah. that you can pick up a pen and sell it for two credits. And you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> stop. Because it makes me, it does two things to me. One, it makes me want to gather as much as I can so I can yeah, sell and sell it. all the junk, yeah. Right, but then it makes me go into this inventory system that I really don't enjoy managing items in between myself yeah. and my other character. I want to just do the mission, but I get encumbered by like the second room. And I'm like, Jeez, Louise, this I is feel fun. like I feel like Outer Worlds did it r- extremely well where I was able to get so much junk and mm. then it's the weapons that really ultimately weighed me down uh, and that was fine because I kept a lot of weapons but it was like that makes it was sense because it's I was, useful items though right useful yeah, items weighing me down yeah, I don't junk have as was much like of a, a separate problem. It, junk yeah. was in a separate area of your inventory I don't, I don't mind the useful items that you actually need for crafting or they're actually weapons yeah. or spacesuits yeah. like that weighing me down now i gotta balance that out that i'm actually okay with it's all the stuff that like there's these figurines on a desk that says it's worth like 300 credits even though they only buy it from you for like 30 which i don't understand that system um well, that's pawn shops dude i don't know what to yeah, that's that's how it works <laughs> brother uh but anyway um it's it's all the useless stuff they allow you to pick up. It's really only there for you to, unless there's yeah. some place to place it in the game later. And I just don't know, like, hey, in your outpost, you can actually use that stuff to decorate. I retract that a little bit then. As far as I know, these items are only useful to sell. So unless they're like, hey, you could actually, if you see this globe statue on a desk and you want it in your back in your outpost on your planet, you could actually take it and place it. Then I might be a little bit more understanding of why you can collect everything. So, but I don't, I'm not knowledgeable enough about it. I yeah. don't, I don't care if you could collect everything. I just want a system more. And Darksiders 2 had this where if you're about ready to pick up something, it would tell you, hey, this has worse stats than what you're wearing right now. And yeah. I would be yeah, like, if okay, you I don't want over it. it. It would be yeah. like, oh, that's yeah. not, that's not, uh, yeah, like early in the game, Borderlands does that. Borderlands yeah, almost exactly. every RPG early on, you even the lower end stuff you're going to grab because you want to sell it and you want to get exactly. money. Then as soon as you get money and you're further in the game, you only want what's normally you only want what's like high in stuff. Right. Um, so I wish these RPG games would just simply be like now Boulder Skate, I personally think does it better. They go they got green, purple, yellow. So, you know, like if you're wearing all purple and you come across a green item, you don't need it. Right. Um, but they still don't give you stats and stuff like that. And I kind of wish they would say, like, at least give you the description. Because some some items and some weapons and some armor and stuff, they have, like, bonuses that even if it is a lower-tiered weapon or armor, it might actually go with your character better based off their strength. So, like, I wish they would kind of, like, preview yeah. items and stuff like that so you know what to ignore or a system where anything you pick up after you hit your encumbrance automatically just goes to your companion like some kind of option like that would make yeah. it just streamline it for me so, you know whatever that these are minor nitpicks i'm having a blast with starfield like i feel like right now i'm in the midst of, of playing three of the great games of this year starfield tears of the kingdom and Baldur's gate three like they are there's more great games than just those three i'm just saying these are three of the top games of the many top games this year and i'm playing them all at once and i don't want to put down any of them like i want to keep playing all three actually this weekend i think i've put in separately two to three hours into each of them in different Dang. sessions Dang. Uh, just because I'm I'm like, okay, I love this. I want to do this. Okay, let me finish the Water Temple. All right, let me go do this space mission over here. Cool, I did that. All right, let me go recruit this demon chick who I was thought I was supposed to kill, but now she's on my team. Like, little things like that uh, for, mm-hmm. for each of these games. I'm just, I'm loving. So speaking of Baldur's Gate 3, it just came out on PS5. It is 
just like the PC version. I think it's at a 96 on Metacritic, if those things matter to you. If not, it's totally fine. Um, but it's being reviewed very highly. People love it. The PS5 version is apparently phenomenal. The way it looks and the way that it, it plays and runs, it's super smooth. I'm not hearing a whole lot of stories of major technical problems, which is awesome in a game this big. So, so yeah. I actually think it's impressive them. that they got ultra pc specs now it's 1440p but still everything's ultra um as far as like level of detail all that stuff on the ps5 version and you can play it at 30 or 60 frames per second based off what you want obviously if you're playing at 30 things look better and you're running it at 1440 i think it's 1440p yeah um and if you do the higher end, it drops the resolution. I don't find a game like this needs 60 for me personally, but that's fine if that's something that someone wants, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it does, I, I try, it I is it on smoother, quality. but yeah. um, it's it's not an action game, so 30 yeah. is totally fine. Yeah, I also want to say, I've played a lot of Starfield on uh, on the Xbox Series X, so even though okay. I have, yeah. have it on PC, I, have, I actually have a Steam copy that I shouldn't have bought because I'm actually playing on Xbox mainly. But like, um, the 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 reason I'm actually picking to play on Xbox over my PC is because I have my big, my heavy duty PC is attached to my 8K TV, which is so is my Xbox. But the way the systems work is when you go to set up your like your display, it auto locks whatever resolution your tv's at so if you're on an oh, 8k nice. tv it says you have to play this at 8k so for this game, <laughs> yeah for this game like i can't tell it hey run it at 4k and then i'll turn on fsr too it doesn't do that it goes you're at 8k you can turn on fsr too but you're still at 8k so it's a really heavy burden for this game i can still run it but i have to tweak a lot of the settings and i was just getting to the point where i was like Okay, I either have to move my PC or I'm just going to play on Xbox. I'm like, it looks good on Xbox. I'll just play it. But anyways, here's why I was bringing the Xbox version up. 30 frames per second is, honestly, I'm not making excuses. It's fine for this game. They, they've they got it where it, like, the shooting and stuff doesn't feel... It feels like, smooth. I don't, yeah, it's pretty smooth. I don't yeah. feel the, the way I felt with Redfall, which for anybody who's listening now... Uh, I liked Redfall. Yeah, I'm that one guy that liked Redfall. <laughs> but I had a huge issue with Redfall on the Xbox. I thought it was so janky and the yeah. aiming was hard. And I'm not saying I haven't had those issues with with uh, Starfield. I can feel it somewhat. It's not as smooth, but it's not as bad as Redfall. Redfall is very janky and it was like yanking me everywhere and it was just hard to be accurate. Um this 30 frames per, per second is not bad. In fact, one of the things I have noticed is even though I see a lot of people complain about Starfield Online, I'm not hearing a lot of people being like, why didn't you give me a 60 frames per second mode? Whereas I saw that before the game launched. I saw a lot of people, unacceptable, drop the resolution, put it at 60 frames. Now I'm not hearing that. I feel like this is a game where they were able to make it the level of detail they wanted they also hit native 4K and locked it at 30 frames per second, and it actually plays at 30 frames per second. Pretty consistent there, too. Yeah, you know? this is a, a pretty, pretty good console yeah, version Digital Foundry of the game. said uh, it's one of the first Bethesda games that actually is that consistent with its target frame rate. And they don't have a lot of bugs. That's another thing. I don't know if you guys talked about it in last week's show. There's not a lot of bugs in this game. So a lot of people, yeah. again, online saying it's going to be buggy. Everybody knows it's going to be buggy. In fact, I called out one person. I was like, oh, so you played it? He's like, it's it's Bethesda. I said, oh, so you didn't play it. Got it. Like, yeah. you're an idiot. Don't say it's that. something until you know. And sure enough, he was wrong because everybody who's reviewed it says, yeah, every once in a while you'll get a bug. But it's, it's not like yeah. previous games. So I really think... Yeah. Uh, Bethesda and Xbox really did say, hey, we're going to delay this game for a year. And I bet you most of that year was, we're going to clean this thing up. Clean we're going to make it clean look it as best we yep. can, and yep. we're going to make sure there is no bugs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I just wanted to say, game looks good on console, runs really good. And yeah. my overall impressions is it's a fun game that I actually think I'm going to 
like even more as I get deeper into it. Start, I'm with you yeah. there, Derek. Uh, my early impressions are like, hey, this is a solid 8 out of 10. I'm enjoying it. But the more I'm playing it, the more I'm like, man, I can't stop thinking like about this better. game. I want to keep playing this game. That's um, been the consensus among like Reddit threads too and stuff that I okay. keep seeing. I keep seeing like posters or in the comments uh, for anybody that says anything negative about the game. They're like, no, I, I got to the 20 hour mark and I was like, whoa, um, I think I love this game. Hooked. Now. Like, yeah, you know, I like, also yeah. don't like uh, that. I'm seeing and maybe you guys will disagree with me on this, but I, I really don't like it. Um, a lot of people are just like, it's bad game design. If you've got to play a game for 13 hours for it to be good. Well, first of all, awesome. that's hyperbolic. It's yeah. not shitty for 12 hours. And right. then it just exactly. goes, exactly. oh, my God, it's so good. So first of all, shut up. I hate you. Yeah. Second of all, like, <laughs> I, I think so we should let games be like, I saw one post that said that they expect, this is actually what he was saying. He thinks the game should always be good, always like be at an exciting level. And I said, that's so stupid. Like, first of all, this is an what RPG. What does that even mean? That's, it's dumb. Like, would you want them to, like, have you, after the, the, you log into the game, they just unlock everything for you and be like, here, experience the most exciting stuff up front. Then you would be just doing the same thing for 60 hours. Dude, I like, agree with you. Like, these games are perfect, like, they're yeah. purposely designed to be slower, boring, or whatever in the beginning, not because it's terrible game design. It's actually intelligent because they're like, hey, we don't want to overwhelm you, first of all. Plus, we don't want you to play this game for 80, 100 hours and be like, I'm playing the same thing over and over. You want to experience new stuff. So I don't buy into that whole crap. People are are grabbing excerpts from reviews and saying this is terribly designed because you have to play it for 12 hours. It's not. You just have to to get things upgraded and things unlock as you go. But the core game is still good at the beginning yeah. it just your experience gets just like any Even what the better. heck any other game your experience yeah. gets better because they're adding more systems in to you over time just like it's, mario it's, zelda god of war all these games do that that's what makes it so fun every it's every just good dramatic game that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just dramatic yes. it's it's it picking on this game i'm telling you I'm, I'm not talking about whether it's a bias against xbox i'm just seeing well a lot a, of picking double, on this game it's, it's a, a big target bias. it's a for sure it's uh, in my opinion at least it's an Xbox bias plus a Bethesda bias. Bethesda like, bias, yeah. There's oh, already yeah. both biases are kind of built in. Even so if it's, Microsoft it's like didn't fire them, there would have been a lot of this chatter anyway. Yeah, I exactly. But it's, it's I probably do think it's bigger worse because, because it's an exclusive, though. Because I think if awesome. this was on the PS5, because keep in mind, the groups I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Unlocked, that's an Xbox group. I'm in two groups that are calling Moriar- Moriarty groups, and they're predominantly PlayStation guys. So there's Xbox guys in there oh, for sure, okay. but most of them are PlayStation guys. So Call I'm getting a lot of these. Dude, that's what he is. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of these are hot takes. I'm like, God. His whole show is called Sacred Symbols, and it's the PlayStation symbol. So I think you know which way he tends to lean. Um, I think he had he to hire out. people to do Xbox because he refuses still, even though he makes a lot of money off gaming, he refuses still to be a part of that ecosystem. I'll no. just hire people for no. my podcast to do um, Xbox. We will talk a few more Baldur's Gate 3 impressions, but I just want to highlight about Starfield that um, over 6 million people played the game by the end of its first official day of release which broke the record previously held by Forza Horizon 5 uh, of four, uh, 4.5 million players on launch day back in November of 2021. Awesome. So 6 million, that's everything combined, right? That's Steam and Xbox and, you know, the Game Pass and all of it together. That, um, and that's not, cool. con- that's not concurrent. It's just overall players in that 25-hour period of, of release. That's incredible for amazing. a single-player experience. <clears throat> yeah. like yeah. Forza, the appeal there was like, I'm going to play with my friends or beat their scores. And um, yeah. there's yeah. that doesn't exist here. You know, that's very interesting. Um, there was an interview with Todd Howard, and one of the most notable things he said, I thought, was... It just works? He, he, he said it just works. He didn't, I don't think he said that this time. <laughs> no. um, but he did say he believes that, and take this with a grain of salt, he could be just kissing up to his bosses. But he said that Xbox exclusivity allowed them it yielded a better product because they were able to just focus. No, I, I actually do believe he's being honest because they've had so much issues with PlayStation hardware. He said they, the they didn't have like they didn't have to troubleshoot for tons of yeah. different platforms and configurations. It was one and they got to stick to one. And they've and always true. had a really good relationship with Xbox. They always did. This is prior to them being bought out. 
they've always had a good relationship have, with Xbox. Xbox has always given them early access to stuff so they could make games on their systems better and easier because yeah. we all know PlayStation in the past, it was more difficult to make games. But, and that's Bethesda's I just want to struggle. Though, that's probably true of, if you were to go ask the Square team, they'd probably say the same thing for Final Fantasy 16. Developing this for one platform really Absolutely. simplified our efforts here. I have Absolutely. no doubt that that's true. But... Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, just wanted to now flip it they up get an extra probably what year to put it on Xbox and PC probably. gives them more time. They got probably money from PlayStation might, for advertisement I, and all that. Sixteen stuff. might yeah. never go to Xbox. I think it might just do just like with remake. It might just uh, just hit PC. Oh, you're That's true. It. That's true. I think it will. I think it will be different than remake, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, who knows? At Although you're right, it, Final Fantasy VII is like That's one Final Fantasy VII games, is so like PC. traditionally traditionally PlayStation. It's Final Fantasy VII, so that one does make a little more sense to stay over there. But um, all right, let's talk some Baldur's Gate three. Uh, I've played it a little bit more. I'm super early in the game, just like with Starfield. I'm allowing myself to just explore and do a ton of side stuff, do all the optional things I can find, poke my head through doors that I'm probably not supposed to be in and run away. You know, like that kind of thing. Like it, I'm just having fun exploring. I think it's really cool. Um, I have the same qualms with the inventory system with both these games, but it, the games are so good that that's not even close to making me not enjoy them. Like, not even close. Okay. So don't please don't yeah. misunderstand my Starfield or Baldur's Gate 3 inventory qualms. That's just me going, eh, I don't like this. But I'm getting used to it. Um, just like with Witcher 3, that was my least favorite thing of that original version of the game. It's been yeah, th- vastly improved. Drove me nuts too, but I hated I their don't know what the crap pieces. all this stuff is. Yeah, and then they added these like these slots you could like um, install certain orbs into, and I was like, this system is super convoluted. They've cleaned it up over the years. It's much better now. Um, but yeah, I, sometimes a certain menu interface can kind of mess with you. But when the game is good enough, it doesn't matter. You're going to push through that stuff, and that's what I'm doing here. I love the party. I've only got maybe seven party members or something like that. Is it maxed out at four on the battlefield though? Or does that yeah. change? It's four. Okay. That part I don't like having to choose. I'm like, dang it. I don't, I want everyone. I want everyone on the battlefield with me, but I mean, um, the yeah, way I, I did I it is, but then everybody... your battles will go forever. <laughs> I, I, like I mean, they already battles. do. I, I actually yeah. don't know why they didn't do that because you're going to end up fighting like, and maybe you have experience somewhat, but there's just battles where you have like 30 enemies. <laughs> I haven't had like, 30, but I had a battle where the, all the areas were inter- too interconnected and enemies kept joining the fight because they would yes. like come in view yes. of somebody. And I was like, oh my Just gosh. Coming. I think and it was then probably, there's like, other times where you're going to have like other helpers too. So this is why yeah. I said I don't quite understand why you can't just add as many to your party like if you got nine people why can't you just have nine people traveling the world or whatever um with you i don't even think it would be a hey it's gonna put too much on the hardware i mean they're just running around with you um and then in combat they stay still until it's their turn so uh i hated that too um but i I mean the system i use is i found my favorites i stuck to them and then whenever it was their sub stories, obviously I would exchange one out and then I would focus on that one sub story yeah. and then yeah, boot them and bring back my mains. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Most RPGs over the years that have any kind of party based thing, you're going to have to make a decision at some point who's on the bench, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's not that. Not I mean, Midnight Suns is even worse, man. Midnight's are, oh. oh, is that the night, right name of the game? Yeah. yeah. Marvel. Midnight's yeah. yeah. Uh, where it was like tw- 25. Oh, your favorite f- superheroes. So many. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Everyone's like, "All right, would... we'll wait back here during your big end of the world battle." So yeah, yeah I will like say four. with Boulder's like Gate, it was easier even. for me personally because the ones that I benched, I just didn't find them to be. Maybe I d- definitely wouldn't just say maybe. I know it's me. I didn't understand them enough to like make them powerful and good characters or how to utilize them correctly. So the main ones I used. I knew all the moves, I had all the equipment I needed, and I knew how to use them effectively, so they became easier for me to use. The other ones, I would bring them in, and I'd be like, God, dude, why do you keep missing? Or, wow, that was a really great spell. That did so much nothing. Like, (laughs) you know, that type of stuff. So those people were easier for me personally to bench because I was just like, you're not worth even... You're just annoying to me. Whereas the four I had, including my character, every one of them were powerful. Did like you I knew out what for they like did. individual uh, 
quest lines that they have mm-hmm. you do that okay yeah that's all i would do uh, do you ever do you spend a lot of time controlling those other characters and conversations and exploring or mainly just your main character? okay so my main did not have uh a lot of charisma uh they were just a fighter i mean and i think i i think i got bonuses on one like wisdom okay. so it was never really helpful so my main one actually that i traveled most of the world around uh because they were great at lying and they were great at detecting everything it was a Sterion. this guy right behind you on your yeah the road yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was perfect because he detected all traps he was also the one i broke into every door unlocked yeah. every um chest with um and in conversations especially if i knew a conversation really mattered because i would talk a lot with my character but ones where i was like I need to lie to these people or deceive them in some way, and I need bonuses to do it because the the die is really high. He was my go to. I would be like, "All right, I'm just going to use gotcha. him because he, he'll well, be able to lie." What to about him. Uh, is it Gale, the wizard behind him? Yeah, um, he's he he's a telepath though, right? So he can kind of in the middle of conversations be like, "What are they thinking?" Uh, right now like he can like just listen to their thoughts or something and and i don't know maybe assess a conversation differently is that is that accurate or i saw that in the notes or something for Mm. his character uh Um, all the characters that can do that with the tadpole i don't know oh that's some special yeah yeah. i was gonna say my main custom character did that towards the beginning a couple yeah that's it like that's actually if you choose to do that then you're utilizing the tadpole inside you and that uh, actually is part of the game where I might be. I you think can I'm either do a, a run uh, where you a, don't a use spell. it at all. There's a spell that he has that I gave him. That's like, um, oh, detect you have, thoughts. Yes, detect thoughts. Yes. Yeah, he can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that and was more helpful. There's, or there's like potion stuff. that you can drink, and there's scrolls that you can get that are detect thoughts as well. I, yeah. I will say there are certain battles that I have that I'm just like, dude, I'm in the groove. I understand how this works. I love strategy games. I'm the best. And then other times I'm like. I can't get anyone to hit. Everything's missing. All of a sudden, yeah. the percentages are super low. I'm doing my normal strategy. Something, I don't know what changed. There are certain times where I definitely am like, because I'm not a D&D player and I don't always understand the yeah. the, the weaknesses, um, the saving yeah, codes and all that stuff. I'm I don't check like, that stuff as much as I should. I don't inspect, I don't know, you know what I should have done here differently. That's why I, I think I'll like barely easy. make it through some fights, you know, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. The well, easy okay. for this game is very, very helpful for a lot Pretty of so. us because yeah. if we were playing this on normal or hard, it's it's not even just like stuff we've talked about where it's like, hey, my character build has these advantages and disadvantages and blah, blah, right. going against this enemy that has this advantage. It's also like the area you're in, you know, yeah. like the situations you're in. Like there's a lot of things you have to calculate not with an actual calculator but you have to calculate and and think through that's why larian said every battle is its own puzzle you cannot use the same solution over and over and over and even me on easy i know even (laughs) me on easy where i got into i had you know my two main powerful characters were me i was a fighter i had my legendary equipment like that legendary sword i unlocked freaking obliterated a lot of a lot of enemies and then i had another character who was a bulky character with i i decked her out with high-end equipment as well and her and i would just tear everything up well when we get in fights where that was like oh cool that doesn't really have much power over us Mm. um i was i was screwed and that's why i would have to figure out like Okay, what can I do? Like, so I was sharing... ba- you gotta have a balanced party, right? Like, I yeah. my main character is a ranger, so I always summon my little beastie buddy, either a either a bear or a wolf or something, which is awesome because they have their own uh, okay. turn and movement and stuff, that's which cool. is pretty. That's, that's cool. cool. Um, you can actually even control them while you're exploring and just run around with them if you want to. Like, I don't Ooh. know, they let they let wow. you do everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so my ranger has a, a buddy, and he also is really good at from a hidden position he hardly ever misses uh so he like my main guy is pretty awesome I, i'm really glad i chose i don't usually choose ranged characters i usually choose straight up in your face either super yeah. strong on defense That's or super I strong like. on offense um, but i just tried to i, I knew that i was going to get some characters like that some main characters that were going to be joining me that are all melee or 
you know, really good melee. So anyway, I went a different route. So I'm really enjoying that piece of it. And I'm trying to balance out the group uh, and trying to get like really good magic caster and really good healer and really good melee, really good ranged. So I, I see that like it, I need to give it more thought. And I, it's a good point you make. Like every battle is going to be a little different. You can't do the same thing over and over. And, I, you know, just a few weeks ago, I finished Final Fantasy 16, which I love that game. It's super fun. But I did the same thing in every battle. Like I had the same rhythms through for every enemy. No enemies had elemental weaknesses or strengths. There might have been some moves I did a little bit differently, but for the most part, I would say like like eighty eighty percent of the encounters I did the same yeah. patterns over and over and over. It was and over just again. what you were. You had more skill sets you were unlocking for each battle the further right. you progressed in the game. But then you would discover a new pattern, a new fight pattern. Yeah, that you would I would do every I would fight. swap something out. Like, ooh, I liked. Yeah this one new yeah. one that I won't say who it is, but there's a really cool new one, the very laser focus that I switched to. And I stuck with yeah. that for the rest of the game. I love that one. Um, yeah. So yeah, you're right. Like I would swap those out, but I wouldn't change it based on the enemy I'm fighting. So this is right. a little bit exactly. different. It's just a new uh, fight pattern. Yeah. And it's, this yeah. one you can't, and, and I'm, I've kind of have that final fantasy 16 brain still intact, but fortunately because sea of stars is side by side with this one. I'm, I'm granted that one is not as uh, puzzly as this one when it comes to its fights. Like there are some instances where there's like a almost like a slot machine roll, and there's certain attacks you have to give them to weaken their power on their special attacks on Sea of Stars. But so that's the only puzzle element to those battles. But the point is, is that the the turn based element of it, uh, the patience that you have to have, and like the thought you have to put into every attack, and like if I do this one, then I have to double my attack on the next right. person that I play, and blah blah blah. Like. You're actually putting thought into so like I'm willing to do it because Sea of Stars is kind of like helping me and Octopath too as well yeah, helped yeah. me earlier this year. You know what's uh, one feature of Baldur's Gate that I do not remember. I, I have yet to remember to disengage with an enemy that I'm right beside. I, I cannot remember to disengage. I don't know if it's Derek that's something that you do <clears throat> where they won't hit you with that hit of opportunity as yeah. you try to move. I get hit with that every friggin' time and every time I'm like, oh, I didn't disengage. Like I just and is that, that what whole, it is? Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't it takes, I didn't it takes run into your that action. too much just because, like I said, my two mains were... You wanted to be up and close. I wanted to be up and close, so I was right. never trying to move away from them. I was always trying to So my get ranger, closer. I'm constantly, like, kiting away from them, right, as yeah. they come towards me. So I feel like in every battle, there's at least one moment, and sometimes they'll miss, which is awesome, because I've got high mm -hmm. dexterity and stuff, so that's good. Uh, but when they don't miss, it's like, great, there goes, like, 20 health. That All I had to do was use my action for that turn to disengage mine's just like you a, can unlock um, later where you can disengage without wasting an action i think a rogue can get that so anyway um yeah little things like that. does that Asterian's I do, I, actually one of my favorite characters in the game yeah. he's great uh, he was not happy that so i agreed powerful. to take up a side quest involving a druid cult or whatever but uh, -huh. uh but he's still they're great. all they're all uh, pissy they're yeah all they're all pissy. they all got their things they why, all got their... why are you doing that i don't well, care okay yeah. they're all pissy but they're also like they're all a little bit horny for you. Like all of them yeah. came on, yeah. started coming on to me immediately. Like all I had to do was do that goblin quest. And I just chose the route where I pretty much killed everything and took down the goblin leaders. I did all that stuff. Cool. And then, then green girl, green Voldemort girl with no nose. Um, that night she was just like, <laughs> her I name is like, look at tonight. I was like, what up, you want to do what to me? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, she, she wanted me pretty bad for like wow. several nights after that. And I was like, okay, that's just cause I killed everybody and I'm covered in Jeez. blood. Still. Well, From the that minute does you meet actually, her, I'm like, she's that actually aggro. turns her race on. So yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, they're they're sure. definitely killers. There's a system I just now started to notice this past week. I might have mentioned it last in our last show because I had just maybe noticed it then. But um, this inspiration moment system, where there's like something that you do that all of a sudden unlocks some. Hey, you inspired this member. I don't know exactly what that does, but it makes me feel really cool. Like, oh, that storyline. I think quest it's thing, like, like their loyalty like, to you. Yeah. Like so far, Will and uh, and um, what's the girl's name? The green girl. Those two have have had the uh, most things trigger for me. It's like look at Kef something. Lazio, 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 Lazio. Yeah. Um, it's like I actually Austin just know her race, get the Yankee or whatever. I'm I'm guessing she's been on your bench, Derek. Is that why you don't really, you couldn't remember her name? She's the, actually I I don't really care. I'll say it now. She's the one I killed. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I actually killed her. Well, she's. Wait, early in the it's game? It's not that she got killed. You killed her. I early, killed her. That's like early funny. in the game or like later on in the game? Uh, it's act one. There's wow. a part when she's trapped she that you, I guess one. you could you could have because she's trapped by these people and you could have them kill her or you could kill her. But 
So um, I won't like spoil those people it. People end up being your allies, like, though. So I, I don't know. Essentially, <laughs> spoilers. Essentially, I was in. I think it's the sure. late, late part of Act One, like right before I was going to Act Two. I explored this area that's like really big for her, and there was some choices I had to make that I didn't feel comfortable doing because I felt like they were going to take me down a path I didn't want to. And she was very adamant that I needed to do them. And I made the final decision. I wasn't going to do it. And then she got, she turned on me. And so I killed her. Dang. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. I like that. So that's why in my chats, like that's why I kept telling you guys this screwiest game I've ever played. Like, because this is like, this is stuff other games have and i'm not saying other games before this that i've never played haven't done this before it's i'm talking more it's the level that they do this at and how it's all intertwined is crazy because in my experience games like dragon age and stuff like that they've done this stuff but they've never done it at this level and a lot of times like let's give it i'll give an example like mass effect There's characters that were in your party that you could have die. Like there would be situations where they would die. Well, they would just like replace them like some default character. So in later games, um, they're there, even though they're not there. So it's like the same race, almost the same exact character, but it's not his name, not, not hit, not him. Well, that's not the case here. Like if you kill her, you mean like Rex? Yes. Yeah, they like, replaced they just like replaced a Rex a with another Rex, yeah. but it's yeah. not Rex. Yeah, um, like the clone it, kid or whatever here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you kill her, they're not like, well, uh, what do we do? Like, we better put another Gith Yankee in his party because, like, we gotta have her. No, they're just like, okay, you killed her, <laughs> so she's gone. So yeah, that play, quest play is it gone. again next time if you don't want her to die. Yeah, play it differently. Like yeah. that's just yeah. the way it is. And then, and again, I won't mention the person's name because I know you guys aren't as far in as I was, but like there's a certain character that was not in my party that I was immediately drawn to, not just like physically attracted to. You told us about her, like, and she 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 died in a battle. Yeah, she was super cool and then she died in a battle and then I found out later, I'm like, she could have been in my party and then in Act 3, there's like a huge quest with her and one of her companions and I'm like, I missed out on all of this. You're going to play this game again. So I, 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 of course, it. I have to. Like, yeah, because there's, there's some characters that come in on a fight and like I, I just encountered one who ends up joining your party. I haven't had him join my party yet, but they'll just come in on a fight and you're like, oh, that guy looks looks very handy. He looks like he knows what he's doing, but yeah. you, you don't find out until later if they're going to join your party. He could have died if I wasn't good mm. at what I do in easy mode. Like he could have died yeah. in, that, in that one yeah. fight. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting Easy to think mode. of that. Okay, so it's good to know. Yeah, I gotta that is good to know. make sure they don't kill everybody that's uh, my ally in the battlefield. For real. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna talk about this game some more because I even just talking about it now, I know I'm gonna play. Oh, it more I haven't. This week, I haven't but... said that. Um, I I'm kind of playing similar to Derek. I, I have I'm, I'm a barbarian class, and okay. I went with half orc, and um, it was a build based axe on, or something like that. Build. Yeah. A build yeah. based on a uh, rock paper shotgun, and this time, unlike my PC run, which was just one hour, um, yeah. I beat the first boss, the optional boss, because I uh, recruited the brain figure with me, yes. and um, he was able to kind of like get some extra attacks in, and also um, I kept the mind flayer alive the whole time. I Dude, shielded him. I didn't know I you could him. even do this. Yes, yeah. you you're supposed to like shield him, heal him. Because he's right in front of the boss. I just so went right to the controls the whole time. and finished that thing. He's just you know? gonna the yeah, whole time. Yeah, he keeps them distracted so you can yeah, beat him exactly. down. So I exactly. use that distraction. And his attacks just to... are like the only ones that work. His, like, <laughs> I use the distraction just to loot everything. All the dead bodies. I just like loot, 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 yeah. loot, loot my way through. <laughs> well, that's I got because that I didn't think great. when I, I first loot. bought him on PC, like my first playthrough. Obviously, I've started a second one on PS5, but when I fired him the first time, I was like. He's got over 100 hit points. This other thing's not doing much damage to him. The game literally tells you, like, hey, we better hurry up and get to that switch. Yeah, so I was like, oh, here. they don't want me to kill him. Rushing you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's then I, I watched a video I talking about, like, good weapons in the beginning of the game. And they're like, yeah, kill this first boss. You get this flame sword. I'm like, I want the flame sword. Yeah, that's what I have. <laughs> so yeah. I want that's, the flame sword. So that's what I, on my, PS5 uh, playthrough, I immediately 
fought fought him. I was like, no, we're we're fighting. And then I got the flame sword and I gave and then, it to and then, uh, my gift. It's Yankee. a disengaged thing that Tim talked about, where like as soon as I as soon as uh, the mind flayer killed that guy, the mind flayer says, "No, I have no purpose for you." And I didn't process what he was saying, so I went to go loot the boss guy. Like, okay, and as bye. soon as I did, as soon as I did, tried to back, walk away, he was like, "Where are you going?" And he just like immediately started attacking me. I was like, "Oh no, I got to kill yeah. the mind flayer too." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, attack of opportunity is is yeah. killer. Luckily, then, the mind flayer to... died in my session. The, he, he still had a, kill, he the still had like a, he still you. had this much health left, so I was oh, able okay. to. Kill. Yeah, I was okay. able to kill him eventually, but uh, and then that was like the the things that come in the two extra bad guys that come in eventually. They were still entering the room as I left. Yeah, as so I got, we could get So thank out, God yeah. for easy mode, dude. Thank God, because I would not. Have yeah, could you imagine I, playing? I know this game is it's like easy is actually easy because I've seen a lot of people yeah. posting like I'm intimidated by this game. I'm like, put it on easy. There's nothing to be intimidated. There's literally don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not setting up like you guys should never die. I definitely died. But there was only one battle in the game where I was like, "We're stuck." I don't know if yeah. I can get past this. That's and what I the character died that previous. you couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. talked about that previously. But even the end boss, like uh, again, I won't spoil it. I do want to just give real quick, and then you can move on to whatever because we do talk Baldur's Gate a lot. This is That's my great. favorite game I've ever played. Uh, there's a lot of great games wow. out there, and I I feel like. I shouldn't be allowed to say this because I already said that about Final Fantasy 16. So what's going on with me? But <laughs> those are two of the best games I've ever played You're keeping for it two pee. different reasons. Yeah, yeah. For They're two different, different reasons. Yeah. I absolutely love Final Fantasy 16 for everything it did. I think it's an amazing game. But then playing this game and it's so different and going, but this is this is Derek. This is what Derek loves. This yeah. is Baldur's Gate is everything I love. In like Dragon yeah. Age, Mass Effect, it does everything. Everything you described that you wish games would do, this game's doing it. it it's doing it. And mm -hmm. then like the ending is absolutely like amazing. And one of the best parts was like there's actually um minor spoilers. There's two boss fights. Um, but you'll know when you go there. Um, but the second to last one, I just turned all everybody in my party invisible before i went into the the stage so not hide and, but like an invisible spell yeah so we did invisible and then you can just it goes into turn-based mode and you have like 10 turns to get to where you need to go to open up the portal so i ended up doing that now they did spot one of my characters so i had to fight for a little bit before i got everybody through but i was able to get everybody through without with basically bypassing mm. the entire fight and then I was able to go into the final fight pretty much fully healed Old, or health, health wise. And you have yeah. all your potions and all your. Yeah. yeah. And I absolutely obliterated. But my mm -hmm. my one last thing I want to share is that this game has like all this build up. It has. First of all, it has an actual most of these fantasy games don't have like really a good main plot. And when I first heard what the main plot is like, you got a tadpole in your head and you can't remember anything. I was like. Okay, cool. But the actual <laughs> main plot is actually really good. Yeah. Um, and then the amount of not only people in your party, but just races and, and characters in general that are vying for all the same things. Your guys, as you guys play it more, you're gonna be like, dude, this is like this is this is Game of Thrones. Everybody wants the same thing and they all right. have their different reasons and yeah. and then the sub stories, again, I won't get into spoilers. Some of the best stories in all of gaming and maybe all of entertainment for me personally, like where I was like, tough, tough decisions for these characters that you absolutely love. Do I let this character yeah. become this or do I deny it and then piss them off and then they hate me? Like, what do I do? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, these were tough decisions where I didn't go and look at a guy and go, Hey, uh, if what's I make the best this decision? To make, yeah. yeah, I was just yeah. like, I'm gonna make this decision. Now, I, I'm not afraid to say this. I absolutely save scum or whatever it's called, where yeah, it's you like, hit quick eh, save before a big conversation. I don't like oh, this yeah. result. I'm going back. So I have done that. But I overall, love that, by the way, you can save anywhere at any too. point in the game. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, I love yeah. that. More games so, do that. I just want to make sure that I say this, that I absolutely think this is one of the greatest games. If you're looking for yeah. a story driven choice, like like weight on your choices and your decisions that not only 
impact like the characters in your party but they impact the main story like the things you allow these characters to do impacts the future of that end of that story and it's yeah. crazy how they get, are able to tie it all together i've i've never experienced something at this level i think uh, it I helps was... that the uh, the personification of the characters like in how they're acted and, and animated so good i mean it, it helps us all of the them gamer are voice... relate to, to exactly. everything every, they're saying every like, one of them a yeah, every, is amazing a gail is like one of i thought yeah. gail was a voice actor from dragon age because he has almost the same exact voice and charisma and i looked him up he's a different guy but i was like this guy is amazing like that's why i was actually drawn to gail i played a female character i was like if i'm gonna hook up with somebody i'm hooking up with gail because if i was gay that would be who i'd go for <laughs> um, if yeah. keep going yeah all right Mm -hmm. um but whoa whoa, whoa. um <laughs> but like gail his his voice actor is extremely well done like every yeah. single one of them are yeah it's well so. acted well yeah. like the dialogue is amazing nothing cheesy I, I can't even think of one conversation i had with anybody including npcs by the way we didn't even talk about that have you ever played a game that has this many npcs that are not only acted as well as they're acted, but the actual dialogue is like you would think they were main characters. Like this yep. game treated every yeah. single person that you meet as if they're the most important person in yeah. that game design. And they um, talk like real people with con con with conflicted or yeah. mixed emotions on certain events. Like, And all I'll say this is wait till you get to Act 3. Because oh. I got through the first two acts. It took a long time. It'll be next year. It's, yeah, it'll be, yeah. yeah. Just, if, but no, when you, you wait get to get Act 3, three <laughs> Act 3 is like, oh, Act 1 and 2 are nothing. We're yeah. going to throw everything Oh, so the you. game doesn't get good until like 40 hours in. Got yeah, it. yeah. Gotcha. you got to wait until you get that's it. That's what I heard. Exactly. And that's that's So it's all terrible for 39.6 yeah. 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 hours. Yeah. All right. Well, do we got to move on from this one? Uh, I do want to say I, I actually do find a lot of the systems and the menus and all that a little intimidating, even as someone who loves RPG. So I think it's vi it's valid for someone to be like, that's just too much for me to take on. Like, it's a lot. Like, it is a lot. But it's not like it's too hard. The easy mode, these guys are totally right makes it very approachable on the combat side. And if you just give yourself a little bit of time to learn how to equip good gear and how to cycle through characters, like it, it it'll fall into place. The pieces kind of start to come together. It yeah, does take I an adjustment. I learned a lot, but I couldn't tell you that, oh, my next playthrough I'll play on normal. Uh, I don't think so. I think I I'll still get it's white. Still easy. Yeah. I still don't think I understand it enough, but I, I am getting better. So you can learn. You can definitely learn. So we'll do our quick hits actually real quick now. Anything else that we haven't covered since we since Baldur's Gate and Starfield aren't necessarily brand new? Anything else? And we'll start with Jeff that you've been playing that you want to highlight. It's not that's not brand new, or yeah, it doesn't have to be. Oh, so we'll um, do our quick hits now. Whatever you're. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, Sea of Stars is the other game that I've been playing a lot of. Um, nice, and I'm very. Very surprised at this. This is coming from somebody that I wasn't on the episode when Dan said this, but he was like, when y'all did the budgeted whatever, yeah. pick pick your three games that you mm -hmm. really want. And he listed Sea of Stars one. I was like, come on, bro. That's yeah. not a triple A game. It's on Game Pass. And who, come on. Pixel uh, art. <laughs> boo, pixel art. And now I can't stop playing. Like in, in short, like hour to two hour bursts, yeah. I can't stop playing it, dude. It's um, It's so good. And I hit a story part a big story part too, where like the whole kind of world is shaken by this event, this sort of, I don't even want to allude to what it is, but it's pretty catastrophic. I think that's okay. even the, the name of the mission I was just on like cataclysm or something. Uh, and uh, now I'm going around fighting ghosts. You can kind of figure out who I'm fighting based on that. If you're far enough in the game. I'm not, and, uh, so I don't know who that is yet. I have a fourth party member now too. I don't know if you've gotten that yet. Um, nope. no, Dang, dude, that character rules! Like I never I've wanted only, to use. The I've food only guy just now again. gotten through the uh, <laughs> the pirate section. Like the, the or I'm in that section. That's, oh, okay. why, that's where I left off. Yeah, there's there's some great character details with the with the pirates in particular, yeah. and um, there's a uh, there's a character that shows up early on that they kind of hint at, and whatever they show up later on, and okay, uh, cool. anyway. They're, they're the ones that sometimes you'll see whenever the casino slot, that's what I call them, the slot machine spins. Whenever yes. they spin 
for each enemy and it's like okay they you need to hit them with this attack and mm-hmm. sometimes there'll be a poison one that comes up uh oh. your fourth party member is the one that can use the poison i haven't attack. seen that one pop up yet okay that makes sense oh okay so I, at some point they did and i was like uh, how am i supposed to poison attack you i don't have the character. Do I throw uh, something at you? <laughs> yeah, eventually you do. Um, oh, there you go. But yeah, I just uh, I just love the progression of the game. It feels good that it's like every 20 minutes or so you hit like a save book. And um, that's why I've been able very to like... player friendly. You know, yeah, very, friendly. very much so. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like everything's kind of paced out kind of beautifully. And uh, the fact that it's not a daunting f- f- 60 to 100 hour game, even though it's it could be if it wanted to be. Um, I know that I'm able to like beat it like it it feels beatable and the story suddenly got interesting to me like at first I was like mumbo jumbo don't care magic yada yada and now I like actually give Harry a Potter in the sky ooh. yeah ooh, yeah real original guys oh one's one's <laughs> the sun and the moon okay cool that's great never heard of that before um, anyway uh, I love that and um, what else have I been playing oh yeah the telltale game uh, expanse I totally forgot about it. Yeah. for a bit there and then it dropped episode four this week so i went back and played the last two episodes um and I, I finished them and um episode four doesn't have a lot of choices in it but man is it like kind of like a dark episode about like surviving and stuff and um is that the last one up for this very much in solitude no there's one more episode left there's, five, there's like five well, like the last yeah. one that's released right yeah yeah and then there's the dlc one that should be sometime after i don't know when though um oh. So there's not like one coming out this week. Like you've caught up to where it is for now. And exactly. then later there'll be a fifth one. Or yeah, the fifth like one is in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, the third one, apparently I made a, a cumulative choices that led to something happening that made me go, wait, that can just not happen for other players. Like it just, I Dang. know it's one of two things, you know, because yeah. it shows you at the end, you're, this is what happened for you and other players. It didn't happen. And I was like, Wait a minute. People can just not experience what I experienced. I was traumatized by the end of episode three. Uh, and then episode four happens. And uh, God, it's it's it is prequeling hard to the to the series because uh, there are characters now being referenced directly or maybe even appearing that I'm like, oh, I know them from the show. Like, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So, like, I, I think that's really cool how they're leading up to that. Nice. Um, and uh, things I'm watching. I just wanted to mention uh, the Kurt Angle documentary on uh, Peacock. Mm. Did not know that dude, A, went through so many addiction issues. Um, like, I knew he did, but I didn't know it was that bad. Wow. Like, I, I okay. didn't know um, that he was popping, I'm talking, like, hundreds of pills a day. Like, a hundred plus pills a day for uh, Oxy, I think it was. Or maybe Percocet. One of those two. Because, um, you know, that's the thing with them. Once you build a tolerance, you have to up your dosage. So, that he was at that point where he was a hundred plus pills a day. Um, That's insane. Yeah, and drinking on top of it. So, like, he was in really rough shape later on in his career. Um, and I also, B, I didn't know he was a member of the um, the Foxcatcher team. Like, he just joined. Oh. And then the guy, the coach, killed that other guy's yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah. Like, he just, like, literally just joined. And he was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> uh, I didn't know that either. That was interesting. Dang. So, it's it's well worth watching because of the highlight, all the struggles, and the fact that Stone Cold and The Rock show up to do some interviews. Um, I love that type of stuff. Me too. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is Shane Gillis' special, which I've already watched twice. I, I love it so much. Is, it, that, is it better than his original YouTube one that kind of launched him? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, man. Oh, okay. man. It's so funny. I gotta watch it. It's so I can't even watch it yet. Oh, my God. Well, I don't the have Netflix right now. Is, uh, uh, oh, that's right. That's right. You don't yeah, have Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The title of it is Beautiful Dogs, and, and, it's, and it's because that's a quote from a Trump speech where he talks about uh, Trump talks about killing when he was president. He talks about killing the leader of ISIS. And um, he was like, uh, he was alluding to the speech in, in the whole joke. It's like a five minute run. And at one point, Trump says something like, We had these beautiful dogs come in and attack him. And like, <laughs> <laughs> beautiful dogs. We had five dogs come in, beautiful dogs, <laughs> beautiful dogs. <laughs> and he's doing his amazing impression. Um, he does a great Trump. Yeah, he really does. He was so. Uh, he, of course, he had to. I like had, Shane he had to throw in his swagger Trump. on stage, man. Not a lot of comedians Dude. have his kind of like confidence and swagger, and like a dude you might be having a beer with while he's talking. Yeah. He has this co- great combination. He, he does of this things. pause thing that I don't remember him doing that much in the YouTube one. Maybe it was a nerves thing or something. Uh, okay. But in the Netflix one, he's kind of gripping the mic, like he doesn't want to lose it. Like he's kind of like in the Netflix one. So I feel like he's a little nervous. 
Uh, there's some nervous energy there, even though he knows he's killing. Yeah. Um, and also, he does this thing where, like, he pauses between jokes and does his face, like... <laughs> So, like, there's one setup that he does where he's, like, um, you know, in some European countries you go to, there's just, like, no black people. And he's, like, I know what you're thinking. Huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he does his face, like, right? Huh? He did that uh, a little bit in the first one where he talked about <laughs> kids being attractive. He's, like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of doubled down on it in this special, though. Yeah. What made me go, maybe it's, like, a tick or, like, a I'm nervous crazy, energy. Man. Uh, but he's still his jokes were killing He He did a bit about ISIS and in, in general, like, you know, the quote unquote terrorist organizations. They are terrorist organizations, but that were overseas that um, in how he's like, I think I relate more to them because they're the guys on monkey bars that barely know what they're doing. And I don't know what the hell I'd be doing out there either. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like they're hanging shoot, out on monkey bars. That's like true. when they shoot a gun, their feet move and that'd be me on the <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. I've watched it twice already. I just, I can't iterate enough. That all right. Good I'm recommendation up. there. Okay. So That's all that I one. got. Uh, Derek, what about you? Anything else other than Baldur's Gate, Starfield that you're playing? Uh, well, I didn't realize the expanse. I, I guess I only played the first two episodes. So you're saying episode three and four are out? Yeah. Man, three I and four are out. Yeah. Miss. I must have been in a Boulder skate <laughs> coma because I completely were. missed three. Yeah, and I had that. Uh, dude, you did that in our chat. We'd all be talking about everything and every game yeah. and every topic and culture and whatever. And you'd come well, in like, guys, this character just died in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, um, the best part about uh, my trip in Denver is like coming back, I just forgot to pit play again on everything I was doing in my life. Like I paused everything. And then uh, that expanse was one of the victims of that. I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. I was no, playing that. Yeah, wasn't yeah. I? <laughs> I completely missed it. So good, I'll good download that, and play that. Uh, The only other for thing sure. I think outside of that, I mean, I've watched a ton of stuff, but I'm not going to go through it, but, uh, immortals. I'm not super far in. I'm in chapter four, but immortals of Avium? it's, yeah, it's okay, still it's a, a fun, good game. fun game. I would, I've actually thought about like, Hey, Maybe you shouldn't focus on Starfield. And that's kind of why I posted in the group. I was like, man, I can't stop playing Starfield. Because my plan was to just play it a little bit and then kind of go back to Immortals. But I played Starfield for like six hours straight Friday. Um, but I did I did start Immortals up again. I'm, I'm only in Chapter 4, so I'm not super far in. But I did fight, like, another boss, and it was super fun to fight. Like, the game, like, the entire time I played it, I'm just like, this is way better than I thought it would be. And um, I don't know. It's just really good. I really like it. So it's definitely one I'm, even if I can't beat it before my rental is up, I'm definitely going to buy it. Like, this is one where I'm like, you deserve to be owned. So I will buy it whenever I can get a, a decent price. But um it's just a super fun game i think it's a victim of releasing for me personally at a terrible time uh, there's too many heavy hitters um one games that i would put above it but i still think this is one where i would highly recommend for everybody in the podcast yeah. you should at some point if you're in a lull at all and you just want something that's linear and just fun Mm -hmm. This is the perfect yeah, it's, game. It's on Short my like, missions uh, too. It's like it's like thirty to sixty yeah. minute missions or chapters. Uh, so it's like totally beatable. It strikes me as and like it's beatable a triple and fun. A experience. It's yeah. not a double A experience. Um, even though some I've seen people say it is, it's not. It's triple yeah. A all the way. Combat did too fluid oh, to so feel since I missed a. last week's. I will just quickly say I did play a couple hours of Sea of Stars. I I like it. It's it's not something that I can say that I'm going to get hooked on because, again, if I have a choice between all the games we've been talking about that yeah, look, in my you. opinion, way better, I'm not a 16 bit guy. I played during that generation, but I'm not, there's no nostalgia to, towards it. This is not a Derek game. So I think if I do come back, it'll be because you guys are like, no, you really have to. Um, but at this point, it didn't hook me. In fact, I found a lot of the stuff they were asking me to do again real early on to just be annoying. I was like, I don't really want to do this right now. So I have not. I that's why you got to wait until the 10 hour mark. Derek and game, it, but I don't think that's it, a surprise. Uh, yeah, wait till that 10 hour mark yeah. and then it gets really good. I know. Just kidding. <laughs> well, when I boot up a game, 
everything should be unlocked and should i should be amazing right away that uh, guy's gonna orgasm the games. entire time i yeah. play it the game should be literally all climax actually no he would love metroid because at the beginning you have all your powers but then he realizes after the first boss you're gonna lose all your powers in every metroid game good luck with that have fun um all right a couple quick hits for me lots of tears of the kingdom of course i'm advancing in that game pretty well really enjoying it probably like 45 or so 50 hours total spent in that world and i love it it's so so good so playing that one my son did beat it <clears throat> and i'm he's sorry helped. i heard you say it was overrated is that what i heard yeah that's that's mostly what i said okay. and then um so yeah he's actually been giving me advice and tips on places to that's go next cool like, he helped me it. with he helped me with the the water temple because getting to it is actually more challenging than the temple itself the temples are really smartly done i really like them the bo boss fight is fun i'm so. actually at the fourth temple and that's the one where i'm like i don't really know how i get to it and that's where i stop playing so i'm yeah. actually if you want to talk about being intimidated i'm kind of intimidated to try to go back to it because i'm going to be like i don't rem remember how to do this and yeah, yeah. now i'm gonna to have to have a guy tell me Yep. So I uh, that's where I'm headed next. But of course, I've gotten distracted a ton on the way. So still really enjoying that. Wanted to highlight one other thing. Not a whole lot of other games I've been playing that are worth highlighting, at least tonight. Um, but there's a really awesome mod for Elden Ring that I recommend. If you love that game like I did and you love doing builds, try the Convergence mod. It's pretty easy. It's free to download. And there's pretty easy instructions on how to install it on your computer, how to back up your regular version of Elden Ring save. That way, if you decide, I don't like this mod, I want it out of here, you can put your save back in the right folder and just play it as usual again. Um, but I think it's fantastic. They add a ton of stuff to the game. Everything from like auto pickup from items. They have like 30-ish builds. They're not technically classes. The game doesn't really have classes. Like you, you start with the base class, but all it does is like change your stats, which you can reset later. Uh, and it gives you different equipment to start with. But everyone starts in the same spot and you can respec pretty early on in that game um so anyway all this does is give you some really cool base level classes with unique names and it adds about a hundred new spells i've already used a couple dozen new spells which are amazing i have this frost lightning guy who it's got all kinds mm -hmm. of abilities that did not exist in the game before um it's, it's really really cool and they've really changed the way certain enemies show up certain enemies behave you start every class starts in a different location in the world so i started in the underground near those really slow moving clay men because of the origin of my class that i picked so i mean 18 months of thought and planning and development went into this mod and it really truly feels like almost like dlc from 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 soft it's really really well done so i highly recommend it um but that's really all I, all that i've got for my other quick hits. We're moving real quick to uh, gaming grievances. And it's my turn to do this. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this. The idea here is if you ever watched Seinfeld, where they have the airing of grievances during Festivus, uh, where they What's get to... What's the deal? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> but the idea here is there's something in the gaming industry, world, or experience that we just... It's a problem. And so I'm going to share about what I believe is a major problem right now with gamers, not the industry, not like the corporations or whatever. There's other issues there, but I'm going to address like the gamers themselves. I think a huge problem is weaponizing review scores to attack other gamers. It's ridiculous and it's happening a ton. Like the existence of review scores, I think is already pretty controversial. Like Kyle's not here tonight to, to make his case for, it. I think he makes a really good case for why sometimes a score is actually not helpful just reading their review or watching it on video way more helpful but the number at the end is super unhelpful because it can uh distract from what was actually being said and i totally agree with them on that i do like seeing aggregate scores on metacritic and open critic it helps me for evaluating a game i don't know about like wait this thing got a 90 what is this game i should yeah, go check this if out you've got like 50 scores and you're coming out to an average of 86 i don't need to read 50 reviews I'm going to exactly. trust that even if I disagree with like 20 of them, there's at least 30 there's of them that are there. like yeah. saying this is good. So I'm exactly. going to be like, OK, saying it's good. Exactly. And then on the other hand, we have a whole category we call swimming in sevens because we oftentimes really enjoy games that don't get the high aggregate scores. And that's totally fine because we don't need everyone to like a game that we also decide to to love. 
Man Eater, Greedfall. There's lots of games that we end up loving that don't review super well. We just really oh, enjoy. Oh, be real. It's my category. You guys like dip. No, in we all like Gotham. Gotham Knights from last year. All right, right. So maybe every once in a while, but that's, every once in a while, I live in that. Category. It's mostly you. That is true. Yes. Uh, but in the end, I don't think my grievance is about whether or not review scores matter. I'm more thinking about when reviews from an, uh, a rival studio. Okay, so you have a super. You're a super fan of a certain company or studio whatever and they release a game and their scores are poor or not even not even poor just just mid to not great opponents on the other side they just come out firing they love it like the amount of glee that comes out against another gamer who's into the same hobby that you are like this is not college football where you hate your rival team it's so odd to me to see it this. is though so <laughs> even if you aren't on a side some people just get a kick out of making fun of a game that's reviewing poorly that they're not even playing they don't care about they're just happy it's doing poorly or they'll say like oh that's a shame you know i'm just going to highlight it and keep talking about the opinions of all these other people it's happened a couple of times this year so we had forespoken pretty disappointing for a lot of people 67 on open critic uh, on average and i saw a lot of xbox get pretty excited that the first ps5 exclusive of 2023 kind of fell on its face a little bit at least critically it did right so and i saw a lot of xbox that instead of enjoying their recently surprise released hi-fi rush game they decided to spend their time playing the We Hate Sony game. And I thought that was super annoying and really stupid. Like, yeah. just shut up. Some people like waste. Forspoken. Such a waste of time. It's an absolute waste. It's a Same waste of happened. our limited time on this planet. Dude, I totally agree. Same thing happened months later with Redfall. Notoriously poor performance, low reviews, 57 average on, on, on Open Critic. And Sony Ponies could not wait to just lambast that. They had so much fun. Like, hey, instead of saying, we feel your pain, your highly anticipated exclusive didn't really land or deliver the way that we I all think... wanted. They didn't do that. They didn't say like, hey, we had that with First Pokemon. Man, that kind of sucks. Of course not. It was like, <laughs> Xbox sucks and here's why. Like, it's See, just... I agree with you. I think my bigger issue goes even deeper that these people start doing this and they never even played the game or even had interest in playing the game. Correct. They just want it to be bad because they're not Or like, let's use an example. Like, let's say, I, and I've seen this, where Xbox will they'll talk about how great Hi-Fi Rush is, and they didn't even play it. It's just because it's scored high. Like they they yeah, didn't actually care about system. the games. So great, it's on your right. system, but you don't care about it. Like that, which is crazy. I don't care about it. So I would never be like, well, look at you know Hi-Fi Rush. It's better than Forspoken. I like Forspoken better, even though I can say objectively, Forspoken was. I see why it was scored. Why. It, why it did but my issue is a lot of this is it's a lot of bickering and fighting when yep. you're not actually even playing the game or even caring to play the game people do it with racing games a lot so the forza and gran turismo series get touted by both groups yeah look at our awesome game and many of them never play those games they're not really into racers but they just like they have another high scoring yeah. Uh, but there's some examples of ones that are even more ridiculous to me. Like to me, I see like a red fall of Forspoken, something that under delivers. Uh, I can at least understand a little bit more of that because it overall was not received super well. But the two most recent examples, Final Fantasy 16 and Starfield, ironically, both average 87 at their highest point uh, for PC, at least for Starfield and for PS5 for Final Fantasy 16. So they average about the same. And a few outlets, like, for example, Eurogamer gave Final Fantasy 16 a 6 out of 10. And that brought the average down. Xbox, and I saw some of these. I refreshed it today just to make sure, like, do I remember this right? Oh, yeah. People who were mad that it wasn't on Xbox were all over it. Like, oh, I guess Final Fantasy 16 is oh, a big disappointment. Like, they're all over the it. scores that yeah. were and not it, we, And we're, and seeing, it, we're yeah. seeing it happen now with Starfield. Like, oh, IGN and GameSpot gave it a 7. They're the most, they're the most trafficked. Websites, I guess. Uh, I guess you're, funny you're talking sucks. about this because I didn't know you were going to bring this up, and that was what I was yelling about earlier. Like yeah, I can't so stand like the nitpicking. It's it's looking for what you feel like is a big like weakness in the armor and attacking it. And the, mm -hmm. and the reason why this is a grievance to me is because you're treating it like an actual battle. We joke about console wars and people are idiots, but you're treating it like an actual battle as opposed to like, hey, it's okay to enjoy something. And now if you were playing the game. And you were like, here's my thoughts, and I'm really not liking it because of this. I actually respect that. I'm like, that's fine. Share your opinion. You're playing it. You have you dove into Final Fantasy 16, and here's your qualms with it. And I might not agree, but at least you're playing it and giving your yeah. own opinions. A lot of this is just based on the opinions of others, hence the grievance being you're weaponizing the reviews or review scores of others 
to attack other gamers. It doesn't make any sense. And the, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, and the 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 kicker is the especially with uh, with Starfield was. I see so many times, especially in like our groups and even our groups and not just outside of our group. podcast group. Yeah. Yeah. IGN's trash. IGN's trash. IGN gives Starfield seven. Look, <laughs> Xbox. Look at that score by IGN. It must be a uh, average it's, game. It's, but it's, it's they can use it when it's now their narrative. care about yeah, IGN's exactly. opinion. Yeah. So I think you this was before. This was really put into perspective in a recent clip from David Jaffe, who's not a personality that I oftentimes align with on gaming opinions. I sometimes no, think he's, 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 he's kind of been. Like him, we've kind of been. Jo- I mean, Kyle's been joking on him pretty hard too. After like, yeah, yeah, because he's actually one of them that I think he's a sometimes big he's a problem doofus. with. The, yeah, he's a big problem with the the opinion of a lot of gamers that are like it's it's the developer's fault if a gamer doesn't like the game right away, and I'm like. Okay, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but you're also you're putting all the emphasis on the developers and you're not you're creating an entitled gaming squad and yep. that's unhealthy too. You don't okay. want gamers to be so entitled that they don't live in reality. So anyways, but all right, so hopefully you guys can hear this. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see I it. I can see it. All right, so here's the clip. It's pretty short. Let's just listen to it and watch it. Here we go. Oh, so by the way, this is David Jaffe on his show. Uh, on his you know live stream whatever he's doing and he's chatting with someone don't know if he knows this person or not but this person has some very strong opinions on starfield so here if you're just listening that's kind of the setting he's just chatting kind of live into his mic and listening to this guy share his thoughts here we go i, yet, I haven't got that yet with starfield, can you hear it? i'm not far yep. in it but i, I want to say one thing though mm-hmm. the game is so far based on word of mouth reviews that's the other guy talking not jaffe it's a disappointment. <laughs> okay. Even, I don't think it's a bad game, but it is a disappointment considering. I mean, how much? What, how much have you played? Uh, like three hours. Okay, and what's disappointing about it to you? To me, it just doesn't get. First of all, I thought the intro was horrendous. This guy didn't play I it. Think you can the tell. The writing. What about the intro? Written. What about the intro was horrendous? It just was very lackluster. Like if you compare it to Skyrim. Immediately, you're you know you're you're Jeff fighting is confused. the dragon, and then you're sent out into the world to do anything you want, like mm-hmm. literally anything you want. Whereas this is a little bit, like I said, it's a little more shallow. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit almost more like Mass Effect, where it's more story oriented. It's pushing you in a certain direction. Here we go. Jaffe's going to set a trap right the here. The choices you made. What what is, what is her name? Lynn or Lim? The the lady who's your boss. Do you think part of it is just that the fact that she asked you to burn the bodies and shit and it should be more of a choice versus she forces you to do it and it's almost like it's scripted at that point? That's some of it. Um <laughs> I mean that didn't I, that yeah. didn't happen at all in the game. So I'm assuming you haven't played it yet, correct? No, no, I swear to God, I swear to God I played it, but it's wow. not, when you go to all right, then I'll stop because <laughs> then they well, actually, that, you gotta yeah. you gotta hear this this old guy laugh this old meme real quick. <laughs> <laughs> i do love that i do love that yeah, it's, a, it's a good ad yeah 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 uh, I, so... I, the thing that was like making me laugh the most wasn't like the own it was like a laugh out of frustration of the guy's voice the guy who's calling it disappointing he was clearly valued the sound of his own voice so much, and i get that i'm talking on a podcast and that's like there's some lack of self-awareness of me saying that but look he, it's kind of a disappointment it's kind shut of up disapp- bro i just shut i like up. that Stop being so dramatic with your talking he immediately oh went into details of what skyrim's issue was or like what sky how skyrim plays out and he actually says like you know you get rescued from the dragon and then you have the openness but he couldn't give any details on like because he Scarfields. clearly didn't play yeah him, obviously which is so, why Jaffe, by the way one of the like, image responses this to stupid. this if you're on video is one of my favorites look at this picture that someone made <laughs> <laughs> of the playstation helmet on this guy that's pretty good <laughs> that's pretty good are we sure dan didn't make that uh, dan right. might have dan might have made that that's pretty fantastic all right so we'll wrap this up my grievance with the gamers who weaponize the opinions of others is that they they won't let them just enjoy a thing. So if you're in an active debate, so for example, we do our game of the year debates and we're debating what how things should be ranked. To me in that setting, it kind of makes sense for us to be like, all right, well, here's a shortcoming of this game you like and why my game is a little bit better. Like, okay, I can kind of see that. And maybe you even pull out 
if you need to, you could be like, well, the reviewers liked the game I like a little bit more than yours. And so I think that lends some credence. Like maybe if outside of that setting, though, when you're not actually debating which game is better, you're just trying to trash another game. I think you're just being an idiot and you're just making gamer gamer life worse. So that's my that's my I hate it. My my shock, actually, to be honest with you, because I follow Jaffe, like I, I subscribe to him on YouTube. A lot of times I just watch him to be like, you're dumb. Like, you know, and this is again, I'm a fan of Jaffe because I like love Twisted Metal, but I absolutely hate most of his opinions. Um, I'm actually shocked Jaffe likes Starfield. He thinks it's one of the likes, best games ever made. He likes it like a lot. He said it's like, in his top lot. three games ever. And I'm like, yeah. Is this real life? I'm in shock because yeah. I I actually thought this would be a game he would trash, but no, he yeah. loves it. Yeah, so it's pretty yeah. hilarious that he's <laughs> that he's calling out pony. He gets called a pony all the time too, so it's right. actually right. ironic yeah. that he's in love with a Metal Xbox God of exclusive, War guy, of and yeah. he's calling out like ponies who are the clearly clips, lying. Clips I've seen of him, he does do a lot of like. Well, wait a second. What specifically do you mean by that thing? And I do appreciate that he does that. So that's he did that why to this guy. I've been listening to a lot of, and this is Kyle's fault. I got into Rick Glassman big time, uh, okay. who is a comedian. He was on Undateable, uh, a show I used to uh, yeah, watch. I, and I remember, like I, Rick, yeah, I've seen him around. He's very funny, uh, but he does that so too. dry. He yes, he's very dry, and he does yes. these very brilliant editing jokes uh, that that sometimes his guests will totally miss um, with that he's setting up for. But anyway. The point is, is as an interviewer, he's actively listening. And when when somebody says like a vague point like that, where they're like, I don't know, man, it was just disappointing. And and if he senses they're going into another thought, he's like, well, hold on. What what about it was disappointing? Like, he's like, what? I love that interviewing style, dude. I just yeah. love that Define conversation. Define what your style. expectation was and yeah. how they didn't meet it. Like, like what do you mean by that? that? Because mm-hmm. not everybody here is in your head. Like, not yeah. everybody thinks the way you do. So, well, the guy, when he said that the intro, what did the guy say in this Jaffe clip? The introduction was horrendous or whatever word he used to yeah. describe uh, it. And Jaffe it was like, a okay, disappointment. Or yeah. Like, what, what exactly was it about it that made you feel that way? And the guy couldn't think of anything. He's just like, well, in Skyrim, you could do this and they send you out to the world to do whatever. And I'm thinking, within the first hour or two of Starfield, you technically can go almost anything. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. As soon as the uh, guy gives you the ship, you can go. What are you talking about? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's in as the soon very you get on New Atlantis. It, it like, felt very much like side quests. Yeah. it felt very much like my early hours that I didn't play a lot of, admittedly, of Skyrim and then Fallout 4, where I just tried those games out. I felt like this game opened up in a very similar fashion to those, maybe even I better. Agree. Honestly, they um, actually use a lot of the same formulas that they've used in previous right. games. It's yeah. it is a Bethesda ass Bethesda game. That's, if you do that's not like game. Bethesda, I'm not saying you won't like this. There's still a chance that, that you could semi like it. But it's not, it's not, they're not changing it significantly where you could be like, I see growth since the last time you released the game. They're definitely branching out here. There's not a lot of branching. It's like, no, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Yep. And we're just going to try to do it better, which Agreed. I think they've done. But that's it. So there you go. There's my gaming gaming grievance with other it's gamers. One. It is a good one. I it think anytime you're bashing actually. gamers, yeah. Yeah. I'm always on board. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. actually hate what I am, so I it's, just it's, I like to bash them. It's the very la- obnoxious <laughs> minority who do that. Most people, and this is reflected in our current gen group and really it most is. places, yeah. it's going to be a small collection of voices on whatever side of whatever argument yeah. that that really push that and make it so frustrating. But then there's like a much larger group that's either quieter or just not inclined to chime in on this thing because it's a stupid. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. It's like I'm going to play the games I like and I don't really play the games I like. The discourse. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Um, all right. Let's talk about a few headlines and then wrap this thing up. Uh, Replaced, which was that really amazing kind of pixel art looking side scrolling game from that team from, I don't know if they're based in Ukraine, Belarus maybe. They were near the war and it delayed their game when Russia invaded. Um, it's an Xbox console exclusive with the cyberpunk setting. It's got this incredible yeah. picture or pixel art. Um, if you watch the trailer for it, the animation's amazing. They actually do like hand designed slash hand painted animations with this pixel art. It's really, really pretty. I didn't know it was hand designed. That's insane. Yeah. They said they have over 500 hand painted animations in this game. So, uh, but it's their first game and they want it to be as best it can be. So they bumped it back into 2024, originally planned for 2022, and it just keeps getting pushed Damn. back. But, 
But yeah, yeah. yeah. it is a I've game been, pass. I it's am a game so pass excited game for day that one, game. So yeah. everyone can try it out if they have a game pass uh, when it does arrive next year. So <laughs> excited for that game, and I continue to be uh, unsurprised but still sad about their release date being replaced. Hey. Hey. Hey, good. all right. Well, that we was going to be we the got joke there. I did, but we I got was there. like, no, it's too all low. Right. This next game was Too announced easy. in January of 2021, and it's possible we'll get some sort of reveal for it next year. That's Indiana Jones from Bethesda. Uh, Todd Howard was asked about this, and he basically said, "We'll talk next year when it comes to Indiana Jones." So Harrison Ford in it. We might, be, <laughs> we might be <laughs> with his eyes real big. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we might be getting a bigger. And by the way, that's being developed by Machine Games. Yeah, I was going to say, not just Bethesda, but the, Wolf, the Wolfenstein guys. Wolfenstein yeah. team, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. They have the yeah. biggest eyes. Um, BJ game... up there like, what the, do we uh... do? <laughs> Gotta fight the Nazis. The uh, Game Pass update for September. There's more games joining than I have listed here. I just highlighted a few. Uh, Gris or Grease, that kind of really art- artsy, really cool music game. That game. Um, rules and it's, it's short really it's like four hours yeah it's really interesting starfield of course is already out solar ash and then liza p are some of the highlights for game pass this solar month. ash i think i was the only one on the podcast that played it please for the love i of only I, I played it for like 30 minutes i, I didn't play it oh, very okay long, but i i do own it yeah once you get past epic games i own it past the opening area and you start exploring like what the other they're not really maps but they're kind of like Open each open area has its own aesthetic, I guess, okay. or level so design. It gets good after a couple hours too. Okay, gotcha. yeah, <laughs> that's the theme. Like that's our theme game. today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, leaving uh, leaving Game Pass this month on the fifteenth. Um, Aragami two. Let's see what else is worth highlighting here. The Fuga, Melodies of Steel, Metal Health Singer, oh. Civilization Six, and a couple other smaller games that most of you haven't heard of. Uh, Bethesda exec says that Redfall won't be abandoned and it'll it'll get it. They will get it to be a good game. That's the quote. So hey, they said, listen, if you remember the Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls online on PC was not flawless, but we stuck with it. And now it's insanely popular. Same with Fallout 7. Fallout 7. It's so crazy. It's so crazy to compare. According (laughs) According to this guy. It, it's no different for them. Okay, so he he said it. Redfall is no different for <laughs> us than Fallout. Probably 26. literally one guy working on it. Like <laughs> yeah. just fix it, okay? It's, you have all a, the time because literally closet, nobody it's, cares. It's literally a closet that says Redfall team, and you open it, and it's one guy hunched it's, over. It's, it's like Ryan want? from The Office. It's just yeah. Ryan in the office sitting <laughs> in his closet. Um, but he we said had like a uh, release date of the patch. Yeah, fall of twenty twenty eight. He said, uh, we're going to get up to 60 frames per second. It's going to be the game that everyone wanted, blah, blah, blah. And he did say that Game Pass lives forever, which I'm like, no, it doesn't. We don't know that for sure. And he said, there will be people 10 years from now who are going to join Game Pass and Redfall will be there. So there you go, guys. 10 years from now, Redfall is going to be an amazing game. Whatever. You heard it here first. So that's, uh, yeah, that's that's what he means by that. It's 10 years from now. It's going to be. They, gonna be honestly, as a person that liked that game, they have a lot of work to do because the AI is yeah. terrible. There's just a lot of work they have to do. Yeah. Yep. A lot of and work. And you might say they just released a massive game that's going to have most of their team on it for the next many, many months to update, keep it improved, keep it fixed up, and then create more content for. So Redfall may, may, maybe won't get a whole lot of resources its way. Who knows? Um, Tears of the Kingdom DLC likely not happening, according to series producer A.G. Onuma, who says there's no plans for additional content. He basically just said, we did everything we could in terms of gameplay and story and tears of the kingdom. Like you've got everything. All of our ideas are there. Like there's not like I a bunch of stuff. Support that. And I've got no problem with it. Now, if you remember breath of the wild had a couple of pieces of DLC, um, a lot of it was just gameplay features and map tracking, but they did have, I think a pack of like missions and a boss fight or something oh, at some point. I don't remember that. That's what I was going to ask. Um, I think they had uh, some kind of nothing content. that interested me. I, um, I have the season pass and I tried one thing on it and i didn't i never played it and i think maybe that's part of the reason too not only did they exhaust everything they wanted to do with that game which i can attest it's very complete and amazing um but i feel like maybe a lot, not a lot of people played the breath of the wild dlc maybe they looked at the maybe numbers that, and like, eh. or i'm thinking we've got like a switch to on the horizon yeah. and i think yeah. they're going to transition the team to fully like Locked down on another Zelda for you think they'll well, they did say the team's already onto the next Zelda and it's gonna be an amazing brand new experience. So I believe that. I also wouldn't be surprised if both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom get switched to up reses when they when that releases, like you know, the 
whatever 4k versions or 2k versions whatever it is that the switch 2 ends up being um company of heroes collections announced for nintendo switch that old classic uh strategy game came out in 2006 but there's like a a bunch of dlc for it too that's going to switch and then there's a whole bunch of rumors that the switch 2 was actually demoed behind closed doors at gamescom for a whole bunch of different developers there's lots of whispers about this happening now where they showed an improved version of zelda breath of the wild running at a higher frame rate and resolution of course this was not promising that the game is going to get some kind of remaster they were just showing people how it can look on this new hardware it wasn't like a fully designed piece of hardware it was basically i'm guessing a pc with the specs they're targeting is kind of what i'm guessing um so they also said they showed Epic's uh, The Matrix Awakens Unreal 5 Engine 5 tech demo running on this Switch 2 hardware. Nice. And wow. So that's got people thinking. That's pretty demanding. Oh, and, and the demo, one of the big rumors was that the demo is using NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling technology, which is going to help them. I think that's going to definitely happen. That's super smart, man. That's what Nintendo needs to do with their smaller, lower power machines. Use these up technologies, <clears throat> these upscaling technologies. Um, I think that's great. So there you go. Some Nintendo Switch 2 seems still seems to me like it's a late next year, maybe early 2025 thing that we'll get. All right. Diablo 4 is going to have, we think, maybe annual expansions, at least regular ones. So Rod Ferguson, he's the general manager uh, at Diablo, said um, he actually referenced annual expansions after they were he was asked how long the game will be supported. So he said foreseeable future, including annual expansions. They're definitely doing the Destiny 2 thing. Yeah. Stray is going to be an animated movie. And the partner pictures is making it into an animated movie. Um, Oscar nominations definitely incoming for that one. We know that. <laughs> yeah. uh, They're going to bring in the, Will Forte to voice the cat. No, I'm kidding. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> the question we have to ask is where is our crash movie? Why does Stray get a movie and crash doesn't right? Gaston. Am I right? Because he's the only person that would actually go see it. <laughs> Maybe that might be true. Um, there's been a, Major update for Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which gets it to a solid 60 frames per second on consoles and also awesome. adds DLSS on PC, which it's a little That's cool, a little late for that. But it's nice that it's going to be there now. Hey, I will do a second playthrough of that game eventually. I think, that I, I think yeah. that's a nice that's a nice thing. That's, that's, that, that was definitely a goal of mine when I wrapped it up was like, OK, I definitely want to play through that again because that was amazing. Uh, but I wanted it to be. Yep. more technology they said, yes. they said uh, as long as you nice as long level. as you disable ray tracing then the performance mode now offers solid 60 frames per second they completely reworked performance mode and then quality mode uh, reduces the frames per second fluctuation that people were seeing and, and a lot of other visual uh, issues they were seeing especially on ps5 so there you go cool um alone in the dark reboot has been delayed to 2024 and it's kind of it kind of reminds me of when what was it, Alan Wake, I think, moved out of the way of like Spider Man 2 and Mario Wonder. They're like, we're just going to back up a week. Moved into the way of other uh, games, though? So. They did, yeah, but mm. moved out of that week at least. But Alone in the Dark pretty much just said, we're going to move because October's pretty busy. That's pretty much what their statement yeah. said. So um, they're they're targeting January 16th now for that game. Uh, Which is cool. I should have shot for December or something like that if it was possible. Yeah. I, I, I have I a think feeling January 2024 is, uh, is going to fill up, too. It is, but January is pretty open at the moment. It, it is, but like January tends to have a Resident Evil as well. Like It tends to be a good month for horror games in general. Like yeah, Dead Q, Space Q, last Q1, year? Or this year? Q1 area? Yeah, that was... Yeah. My God, that was this year. Jesus. Yeah, I know. This year Sorry, feels... Gaston, to forget the game of the year. Um, well, I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, we totally forgot I think horror games have gotten so good that they can release them anytime now, whereas it used to be like... If you're releasing something horror, it really needed September, to come October. out September or October. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's just like they're 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 not as niche. A lot of people like them, and a lot of the ones that are coming out now are really good, so they can release them anytime. Yeah. Speaking uh, of releases, I just want to announce just because it's hype for me. Please be excited. September 14th, Mortal Kombat One, and September 15th is Lies of P. So. I will definitely be talking about those on the next. I thought show. those were both later on. Are those that early? That's early, early access, access for MK1, which is oh. and for Liza P too. So, oh, and for Liza P. And I have well, both. I'm excited for one of those. Moderately yeah. excited for one of those. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah, Liza P hits Game Pass on the 19th. That's when I'll play it, and then Mortal Kombat One also on the 19th. 
uh, for the full release, unless you buy, you know, you depends get the for me on that. I don't know if I can do full price on MK1, which kind of sucks. Yeah. I want to play it. Now we've got at least two, maybe three people on the show that are for sure going to buy and play it. So yeah. I'm good with hearing their impressions and. But like which fire is the next day in which fire and and yeah. Liza yeah Liza P I'll be playing that a little bit. Um, which fire is one I'm interested in too. Yeah, which yeah. fire does look really cool. Uh, all right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem, popular movie of course from last month. It's coming to console and PCs in the form of a video game sequel in 2024. So this is Outright Games announced that they're going to publish. Um, this sequel based on the recent big screen incarnation of the franchise set in the same world. They really want to combine this color for art direction with the energetic ninja teamwork gameplay and humorous narrative. So please tell me they're going to have the same kids doing the, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, they're not like officially household names, so they better. (laughs) It's officially licensed by Nickelodeon. So like, it's cool. Yeah. But that's kind of scary because they could definitely like, they're going to go the cheap route. If it was like a big Where developer just dialogue and they don't have anyone talking. Could be. I mean, they might have them, but it would just be like a few lines. It would just be like, I don't know. I, I feel like if you're going to do something like this and you want to feel like a movie like that, you kind of need them all in the same screen at the same time doing like the, the banter while you're playing. Like you need to be yeah. able to audibly hear it for it to really click. That's what I want. Um, there was this Sega Genesis platformer called Gargoyles. If you remember that, I remember the old TV show. Um, totally do. In the day. And there's a, the HD remaster of this is coming out to consoles on October 19th. And just like Limited Run Games always does, they have all kinds of special versions of this. If you go look at the special editions, they're pretty awesome. If you love 90s collectible stuff, if you like Gargoyles, they'll have little statues, little figurines. They have even like an old VHS style like carton that you can open and it has a vhs tape in there with the gargoyles on it like they, they just do really cool collector stuff i think limited run games does a great job with this stuff um so yeah that that comes out october 19th and as I'm totally for, getting that by the way on switch that's like a perfect switch title oh it looks great it's, like a switch it's still pixel art yeah. you know yeah um this is our second princess bride reference uh as max used to always say in princess bride he's only mostly dead and that's what i'm going to say about e3 it's only mostly dead. So events R.I.P. company Reed Pop parted ways with E3 basically because it was canceled last minute and they lost a ton of money. So Reed Pop is out. But the ESA has confirmed it's not planning on holding a, a public event at the convention center in 2024, but it has an outright canceled plans for any event whatsoever. At least not, you know, maybe it could be in person somewhere else or it could be online. But the trade body is still holding out hope and working on a complete reinvention of the show for 2025. So, okay, sure. So yeah, call sure. Jeff Keeley and be like, hey, we really need you. Yeah, for real. For real. <laughs> and last but not least, DLC for Sea of Stars, which is dramatically more popular than they anticipated. Um, I've been seeing them, t- their account tweet out, I'm sorry, or post out, X out, whatever. Um, they've been <laughs> posting about. Z- Zeet out. Ugh, so annoying. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they're so thrilled and I think surprised at the success of the game, just in terms of number of players and, and purchases, even outside of Game Pass and, and PlayStation Plus. So they're thrilled about it, and DLC is already in development. So the game's director said that um, the team's been split in two. Some are looking at their next game. So this is their second. They had The Messenger. They've got Sea of Stars. So they have one team that's already diving into their next project and then the other half is looking at a dlc add-on for cf stars awesome that's pretty cool yeah thumbs up to that yeah love that right. game so far game of the year 2023 well that's all that's i had awesome. on the notes for this year it's... uh <laughs> and i know dan will try to pull that shit i'm gonna stab him <laughs> we're immediately gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna Dude, get to the so overall so game good. of the year and as soon as, he, uh, as soon as Tim scrolls through the list, because this is how it's done every year so far, we yeah. scroll through the list alphabetically. You're going to go, what about Sea of Stars? You're going to hear no <laughs> immediately. You'll say C and you'll hear no. Trash. Sea of trash. <laughs> Even though I love the game. <laughs> no. By the way, there is a game coming out. It's set in the Dragon Quest universe called Infinity Strash. And I'm... I, I saw that. I am just so intrigued by why would you call put the word trash in the name of your game? I don't know. Unless you're like a garbage man, like trash simulator. All right. It is right. baffling. It. it really is. But infinite. it's a Dragon Quest game where you're like fighting and collecting monsters. I don't know. I don't know, man. Weird. Whatever. 
All right. Well, that does it for us this week. Thank you guys for watching, listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace.